This week on RSBNB Update with 2021 coming to a close, it's time to look back at RuneScape's PVM updates. We start with the Rex Matriarchs and move through the Elder God Wars, touching on the most important patch notes and sleepers of the year. This is RSBNB Update, episode 861, recorded Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. Christmas Crits, RuneScape's 2021 PVM Meta. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update. Christmas time's fast approaching here. Uh, you guys are probably listening to this after Christmas, unless you, of course, want to listen to podcasts on Christmas Day, but of course... If that is the case, Merry Christmas, and we love spending your time, our time with you for that. And Tannis, you're here. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Shane. And as it is the end of the year, as it is the end of the year, the clip show will be next week. We thought, gee, what was the theme of 2021? Oh, it was the Elder God Wars. Oh, and there was four fronts to that. Oh, and there was lots of other PVM things. Okay, so let's do a let's do a year in PVM meta review for the special Christmas show this year. And joining us to do that is David and Thaxi. Welcome to the both of you. Hello, good to be here. Welcome. Good to Welcome. be back again. And you know, I, I figure it makes a lot of sense to do this because going into 2021, we knew there'd be a lot of PVM, lots of drops related. We didn't know how substantial they'd be, or. Oh. Are you saying you did? Ra- Raksha had just come out, and I don't, kind of wasn't expecting any big PVM updates. They'd like teased that Elder God Wars might be a thing, but until they actually announced it in yeah. March or whatever, I had I was like, "Ooh, Rex Matriarch, cool! That's our boss for the year." <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, I was I was thinking 2022 for Elder God Wars for sure. I w- I was too, and you know, we, pleasantly surprised. We owe so much to this because. If not for the Elder God Wars, and if not for the both of you, I don't think I would be doing the PVM that I'm doing right now. And I have to say that I didn't anticipate that, and it's completely uh, changed my perspective on on a lot of things in-game. So, big thank you to the both of you on that. But that's also the content at play as well that we have to talk about, and a lot of the changes that we're going to talk about and recap, some of them were fairly apparent, and a lot of them were glossed over. But on another note, and this is what I set out to do when we put this podcast episode together, is I said that we can't just look at the high-end ecosystem. We also have to take a look and see about how these updates affected everybody else. Because if we only talk about the high end, this podcast is only good for a certain segment of the population. But we want this to be a discussion about anything and everything uh, PVM meta of 2021. Uh, Tannis, do you have any uh, uh, thoughts before we uh, dive in? Um, no, but I I am can't wait to talk about the uh, the front, the Elder God Wars front, and kind of where it started and where it ended up um, with some of the accessibility changes that it brought to the game. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, each of the three combat styles. We're going to go through them in uh, the order of ranged melee magic, and then at the end of the day, sum up um, the changes that were made to each one and and where it was at and uh, where we wound up. And at at the end of the podcast, we'll have a bit of a discussion about... Um, what started off as King and what is King right now? And I think we can start us off with ranged. And the reason I want to start off with ranged is because we wound up in a situation where we had the uh, Rex Matriarchs as being one of the bosses that was going to come out early on in the year. But before that, they had just, in effect, brought out Raksha in December of 2020, which brought Greater Ricochet, which we all know the impact that that had. That's a, that's a basic <sighs> ability worth way too much money as it is right now. And it got toned down a bit in August. It's still one of the most powerful 
basics. And I think it's fair to say that 2021 saw relatively few add-ons for ranged. And I know both of you guys wanted to talk about uh, the two rings yeah. at, at this stage, the Stalker ring and, and, and the Reaver ring from the Rex Matriarch. So which one do you, do you want to go first with as having an impact this year? Well, I mean, firstly, it is so wild to me that Greater Ricochet has, is only a year old. Like this, it, it just was so important to how people did damage this entire year. It feels so wild to me that that's only been out for a year. Like that's so crazy in my brain. Um. Also, just as a like a, a note for anybody who's listening who's not familiar with kind of terminology, maybe from other games, meta is actually an, an acronym for like most effective or most efficient like technique or tactic available so it's like what is considered to be the best way to do things and like Shane said we're going to be talking about the meta at various like brackets of experience too as we're going through these but just like as a note for people yeah. um, and I think let's start with the reverse ring because I think that's the good general like this was our of all things one of the larger hybrid combat updates of the year one of the largest hybrid combat updates ever. Yeah. I know, David, you were jumping up and down about it when I sent you this talk. <laughs> yeah, because you left it out. Were... No, I didn't leave it out. I, I left it, I you left it like, in the... You Reaver's Ring. Reaver's Ring, who cares about this trash? I didn't know where to put oh. it. I didn't know where to put <laughs> I mean, it because it was hybrids. under all three styles. Yeah. You put it on, you put it on your finger, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, it's wild because we've had a lot of things that change, a handful of things that change accuracy, a whole ton of stuff that changes and modifies damage you deal, um, but very few things that, that modify the chance to critically strike in the game. It was really just kind of the biting perk and the grimoire, which was so expensive it was hardly worth talking about at that point. Yeah. For a lot of people. And I, and I debated uh, putting in uh, those pages being made uh, easier to get this year, but I realized that the Grimoire is previous year's item, so I, I didn't yeah. put those pages in. But yeah. what I want to ask with the Reaver's Ring, it adds a 5% critical strike chance. So my, I have two questions with this. Mm-hmm. One, how big is 5% critical strike chance in RS? And how big is the 5% accuracy hit? Because I know in the past we've talked about there being bosses in this game where you're going to have 100% accuracy no matter what you do. Are are we talking pre or post what we're going to describe in the magic? We're talking about where we are right now in December 2021. Okay. So, so okay. So the deal with this is that you... Crit chance is huge, right? I think we can just put that out there as, as like, we're going to get to magic and we'll have even larger crit chance increases from the Chandler's ring and we'll get there. But the thing to note with this is that crit chance is calculated in two ways in RuneScape, right? You've got your base crit chance, your 5%. If you hit within the top 5% of your ability's damage window, you do 20% more damage. And, and that's lovely and fine. Um... And any crit chance buffs that are, aside from that, are actually a separate role. So all of the biting perk and these rings and the grimoire, and that's why they're so powerful, is that they do a separate kind of critical strike where no matter what your damage would have been, it sets it to 120% of the maximum damage. So whereas the old one, you're getting maybe 20% additional damage with this, if you say that an ability goes from, let's say, 20 to 100, so your average damage is 60%, is going to set that to 120. So you're now doing double the damage, which is relatively standard for a lot of range capability. You're doing double the damage when you crit on average, instead of 20% more. So these and crit chance buffs do another 5% on top of that, right? Well, no, because your base crit chance only works still with that f- top 5% of your damage window. Okay. So these rings and the grimoire, like they, they do a, effectively a, an entirely separate mechanic from what is a traditional critical strike in RuneScape. Um, so hitting these critical strikes is incredibly impactful for your damage output. Um, and so if 5% of the time you do double damage, and that's a very simple, you know, you're doing 5% more damage. Um, is kind of how the math on that works out. And so 
a lot of things can't crit, right? So bleed abilities cannot critically strike. Um, a lot of ultimate, like damage over time, those kind of things can't critically strike. But for everything that can crit, um, this crit chance is a big deal. And 5% additional damage from a ring slot um, was incredibly meta-changing and is incredibly impactful. Um, and so that's one of those things that, like, even without stacking other things on it, like the fractured armor staff, whatever it is, that, that functions with crit, uh, the Reaver's Ring, you're taking a 5% accuracy buff. And accuracy was for the very longest time in RuneScape. This is the, like, I need to be able to make sure that I can do damage and set damage when yeah. I get next. And nothing. For right. years and years, this was, like, accuracy was king, and if I could get a 5% accuracy bump for a 5% damage bump, I would take that any day. So, like, that's the idea with the Elder God Wars... Or the, sorry, the God Wars 2 weapons that all have 90, tier 90 accuracy yeah. and tier 80 damage. Because and, it was such a big also, thing. And also PVM being locked behind loyalty points for years and years. For auras, yeah. Um, because, th- like, even, like, the precise perk, which you would think impacts accuracy, is a damage buff and not an accuracy buff. Um, like, it's relatively challenging to get additional accuracy and relatively easy to get additional damage. So, for the longest time, accuracy was king. What this ring did was, you know, we're going to sacrifice some accuracy because we have reached a point of power creep where we have accuracy to spare. We're going to turn that into crit chance. They've made this new stat that is now the thing everybody wants to optimize for because accuracy is more or less optimized regardless in many situations. Yeah. I, There's a few places I you still like, use it. It's, it's not really power creep so much as just the the boss design has changed. Yeah. Like, cause it, it, it's not power creep that makes it so we can hit it. Solak and reaction or not. It's just that they have lower defense than, than bosses right. 2018 and our bosses pre 2018. Like all like the magister was a great example of like hit chance. Of the magister is, is ridiculous. That man has defense that coming out everywhere. Same thing with like the raids bosses with Nex. regular Nex is still one of the most tanky creatures in the game all these years later, because that was the idea was that we don't want you to be hitting all the time. It adds some spice to these encounters. Um, and they moved, away from that. they moved away from that big time. We're like, you can absolutely reach 180% accuracy on Solak. Like it is actually doable. So the question um, then at the end of the day is that based on what we've heard here, and I'm betting that both of you guys have these, have these rings um, and you use them religiously. Yes. Uh, yeah on and off uh, i okay. keep a ring of death some places like the stalker's ring when we get to that uh i do use that everywhere all right a lot of places all right well we can kind of pivot to that right now because I, I i think we just said how big the reaver's ring was and it works for all the yeah. styles and it came with the rex matriarchs of all things um yeah i i prioritize getting that for my iron man um yeah. pretty early after it came out because it's just it's universally so good and those bosses are are relatively straightforward to like you just put in the time to grind them and you will get the drops. Which thank you for that. Yeah, and I mean they're one of the reapers that I will just go out and do and enjoy with that yeah. when I when I get the matriarchs. Um, Stalker's ring is is the ranged version. Stalker's ring is not it. Three um, percent um, is... critical strike chance when using a bow. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you there. Th- this is um, another one of those things, and I'm going to say this for a lot of some of the ranged updates that we're going to talk about in the next few minutes, try to be pretty uh, quicker on the draw with these. But um, this Stalker's Ring, so range is in a very interesting place at this precise moment in time. Where you can get a full set of Serenic armor for 30 million coins. And um, if you're using bows, which is the Stalker's Ring only works with bows, um, if you have like an SGB and a hex hunter and like a couple other things in your backpack, you it's really hard to beat a death cost of over one mil. Like it is really hard to pass one mil with death cost in a, a near meta range setup where you are only using bows. So my, my alt account, just for kicks and giggles, and because I'm upset that people are sleeping on things, will be bows only for PVM. So she's sitting on a lot of money worth of bows. Um, and her, her death reclaim will never be over a mil. It's like, I will never use a ring of death. Um, I'll stick a luck of the dwarves into the monolith when I want to like camp something where I don't need extra, you know, relics that require for, for PVMing. Um, and I will just camp a stalker's ring forever because the reclaim cost on it is 34 K because it is an untradeable item. And that is the reclaim cost on it. It's very cheap. Um, I just have less than five things 
on me at any given time that are expensive to reclaim. So um, that's where the, the Stalker's Ring is currently useful, is that it's just a nice, like, it costs 25 mil, but it is the best in-slot range ring if you're using a bow. And we just, you know, we were talking before the show about how a lot of weapons are rising right now. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people running around with Nox bows yep. out there. And this ring is a great, that, like, 3% crit chance on this is just a flat, for those people, it's give or take, depending on the abilities you're using, 3% or more damage increase. And and we're going to paint a picture about bows and arrows as well as we move through the uh, yeah. range section um, with that. Um, oh, are we going to do it on caves? No. Oh. Huh. Okay. You could, you could do a cave painting while Faxi does math, though. Oh, oh my gosh. Can you imagine? It can, be good, it can be good content. Absolute masterpiece. They'll be talking about it 50 generations from now when it gets dug up in the ruins of our post-apocalyptic society. <laughs> oh my this God. is the time capsule. Oh, yeah, they're going to find our SBNB update episodes. Oh, yes. But they seemed so smart. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So as we progress through Ranged of the Air comes a patch note that's uh, very near and dear to my heart because this was your first appearance on the podcast actually yeah the emerald <laughs> criminal bolt change which yeah these if i remember it correctly we said that if your target is poisonable they can be on par with dragonstone right i think that's what they're we better. said better remember, okay. i i i edited that to better in the notes they're almost almost twice as much damage as a dragonstone bolt yeah, they're, uh, they're significantly, targets. significantly better. And I need to I think also just like onyx. And I also just oh, they're, need to they're... ask with that: is that if the person doesn't have things like greater ricochet, obviously, because that adds more pluses to it? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, with with a blood reaver, where you're getting even more poison damage out of it, this does require that you're using a weapon poison plus plus plus. The bolts on their own do not do much, but they have each time they activate, which is basically every time you hit the thing, it's a chance to activate poison. And that poison damage is considerable. Um, so yeah. this is assuming Cinderbanes, but it is not assuming any other expensive upgrades. So it's Cinderbanes and Weapon Poison Plus Plus Plus. Um, and uh, they they allowed for people to be able to fully AFK Grigorovich with Rage right. um, in a Blood Reaver, which was quite nice. And they're... Um... They're, they're about 50% more more damage output than Onyx, given they don't have the healing coming off of the Onyx bolts. Um, they get beaten out by rubies against eligible targets and by Hydrix. Obviously. And some of the new arrows, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, yeah, uh, the incredibly, incredibly and, great bolts. You know, I, and this is still something I see, you know, walking into the clan chat. People are talking about what kind of ammunition to use. The answer is if if it's poisonable and you're not in a case where you want to use rubies or take it all the way up to Hydrix. Onyx is your thing if you have the Cinder Banes, and that's something I've said numerous times since uh, this patch note has come out, so I think this is definitely one of the sleepers of the year. Yeah, and I, I use Emeralds at Solak, um, except when I'm switching to Hydrix for DPS checks on my Iron Man, just because they're so easy to get. Yeah. All right, and once again, simple patch note opens so many doors and possibilities, and that's what we're aiming here uh, to showcase throughout this entire uh, year in retrospective for PVM combat. And after that, it felt like ranged kind of stayed a little bit flat until Croesus, the skilling bot boss, came out. Or Croesus. Did you call it the skilling bug? The skilling boss. I like the skilling that. boss. The skilling boss. <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we see this each and every day. I see this in the Discord. I see this in... <laughs> chats everywhere the and i i don't know if this is the right terminology but the top end ranged ammunition solution of orthodoxy i don't know if you, if you guys like that term or not uh, of orthodoxy yeah i mean if you're in terms of being like the the religion that everybody yeah you follow strictly yeah strictly strictly followed religion is is bolts because people hydrix bolts are bust yeah yeah um and, I think it's clear that Croesus made bows compete with Hydrix ammunition by way of splintering arrows. And I'll yeah. turn that over to you, Thaxi. Is that we I had don't know a long, we had a long discussion anybody. about that when he came out? 
Mm-hmm. Do you still feel the same way? Is there anywhere where you wouldn't yeah. use splinterings? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I mean, they're still there. When we talked about them, they were, you know, I think 9K a piece. They were very yeah. expensive. Currently, they're like, what, 1.5K each? Mm-hmm. Very cheap. Yeah, or, or less. Super cheap. Less. Um, I mean, the so I don't know that it's been made clear, right? I think the same thing is happening with these as happened with hot with the criminal bolts, where the criminal bolts were released in what was it, 2018, 2017? Yeah. Um, and people didn't realize that, like, oh, hey, these things do disgusting damage until t- late 2019, 2020, maybe. Um, and then it took a while for them to catch on, everybody to start using Ruby Bolts. And even longer for people to realize, oh wait, Hydrix, oh my gosh, the damage I can put out with Hydrix Bolts, especially with Essence of Finality being released. That was the big, like, the people who actually do the math and, and make all the theory crafting when the AOFs came out, you could suddenly dump a ton of adrenaline very quickly. In, but it took a long time, and I think the same thing is happening with these arrows, right? Um... Where splintering arrows, like if the other thing too is, I think a lot of people don't. Frankly, I think a lot of people haven't unlocked um, the ability to use these. I think a lot of people don't have puncture and salt the wound unlocked from shattered worlds. Right, shattered because those worlds were is, those two abilities were panned and uh, paled in comparison to um, the the bladed dive. Pl- thank you, bladed dive from yeah. shattered worlds, and even. Again, I have an alt that has multiple billion gold worth of bows, and that account has Bladed Dive and does not have uh, Salt the Wound unlocked yet. Because Bladed Dive is actually just that much more useful for moving around the game world. Um, and, and so that is still, like, even for low level Slayer, because you can, the cooldown on it resets when you bat- dive to things, like, it's a great ability. Um, these arrows are expensive and not useful for things like Slayer because you just use tons you're changing of them targets so much. If you're changing targets, so the use for these, right? Splintering arrows very quickly. Um, Actually, let me just give a quick them. recap on what they say on the tin do before it. you do that. So, splintering arrows, when you use them, all attacks used for 4.2 seconds after greater dazing shot will also apply stacks of puncture, consuming one arrow per stack during the active period. Until the target reaches 13 stacks. Reapplying puncture will result in the stack duration being reset to 9 seconds and the bleed damage resetting to its highest hit. Right. Which which is kind of hidden language to say that the damage on these arrows is front-loaded. The first hit does about half the damage of the puncture bleed. Um, so if you reset that bleed every ability, then you get pretty massively increased damage out of it. Um... Combination that with having the addition of additional stacks to it, and more than anything, being able to add stacks in a very rapid rate. So most people can stack this in under 10 seconds with greater ri- yep. ricochet, you can stack it in under 5. Um, whereas previously it took o- a minute or more to fully stack the ability. Um, and so it it makes puncture a viable source of damage for many situations, um, given you have to consume 10 to you know 13 of these arrows in order to do that. Um but it is an incredible amount of damage. And it can be stacked with other things. And then as long as you continue to use uh, Greater Dazing Shot, you actually don't need to even be on the arrows. You can just have Puncture running as passive damage in the background while you're using Hydrix Bolts even, right? Um, and so you can stack this with other things. You don't get as much out of the Puncture because you're not constantly refreshing it to get that max damage every hit. Uh, but it does do pretty massive damage. Um, on their own, these arrows, just used as uh, main hold switch arrow, no switching at all. They do uh, close to 50,000 damage a minute. Um, comparison, Hydrix bolts uh, are going to be about 40 to 45,000 damage a minute if you're dumping that adrenaline under a death swiftness into Dark Bow special attacks. Um, so, it's... Uh, I go back and forth on this, but but generally speaking, I do believe these arrows are incredibly powerful, and it can be a great addition to using with other ammo, as long as you can maintain attacking your target. The issue here is that if you stop attacking your target for more than uh, nine seconds with a two-handed ranged weapon, uh, the the stacks will go away, and you lose that benefit. And then you got to fire off those uh, arrows again. Right, so targets that have a reflect ability, or that have an immune, like the Arc Glacier when the minions come out, like Virago's Reflect, like uh, Web Shield at Rax, um, they make these arrows more expensive to use, because you have to restack them. Um, so, 
it it's something you have to be thinking about. You know, so that is something that maybe drives people away when there are other options to do damage elsewhere, like magic. Um, but I think these are, these arrows are very strong and uh, have been. People will eventually figure that out, I imagine. Or if they don't, then cheaper ammo for me. Yeah, and you know, for most of the uh, PVM things I do that. Um, doesn't have those phase changes in them, and even if they do, you know, have one or two phase changes with them, I will, I will be using these arrows with, with the, uh, with with the Nox longbow. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Carapac it comes to mind as a Carapac is one this. of the best places to use these. Um, you, you never lose stacks on him. I, I use it at God Wars too. I don't know if that's a good idea. Vindictive. It is. I mean, okay. it's 13k per kill. You're going to make more money off of it, yeah. out of it. In theory, it should actually do enough damage to heal you back to save you food. Equivalent, almost equivalent values in food if you're soul splitting for a lot of those bosses. Right. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just yeah. also remember that each one of these splintering hits also can activate poison. Part of that huge damage number is that, like, you also, every 1.8 seconds, you're firing off an additional hit that can do poison damage. And this is, of course, once again, it seems like so far in range, we're talking about continual sleeper after sleeper with these. Um, do we feel the same way about death spore arrows? Um, have you worked those in anywhere, either of you? Uh, yes. They are part of the best in slot available rotation right now. Uh, at least mathematically, on a target that you know you don't have to deal with mechanics on. So situationally, it may be challenging to use them. Because they but have to the be comparison. Because they have to be swapped with Hydrix, right? Well, they have to be stacked, and the issue with these is that you must time them. They require you to react to the cooldown of them while you're managing other things. So they are, they add something else you really need to be thinking about in the middle of combat, which is a challenge to inter, in, integrate into a rotation, um, right? So quickly they when they activate, they add a stack to themselves. At five stacks, your next ability is free. Um, when they are on, then go on a 60 second cooldown. And every time you activate them after that, it shortens the cooldown by two or three ticks, game ticks. Um, what you can do with these is you can time it so that you have them proc eight or nine times. Um, they, they activate every time you critically strike, which again, critically striking is important for a lot of these things. Um, if you activate them with a ton of buffs, right, this is an expensive setup to use, you can fully you can activate them eight or nine times within 20 seconds which is enough to say that you can activate these exactly once a minute if you use them for the last 20 to 22 seconds of every minute with the right setup and once um, again just means, based on what you said there you got to keep that time in your head while doing everything else you do when you go pvm uh, <laughs> what what i've been doing with these is that um we'll talk about this in another another time but planted feet perk makes you have a 38 second death swiftness and what i the building to these with these is to every minute you activate your death swiftness for free um so assuming that you're in a place where you can stand still and just damage something for a minute um you get 100 percent free adrenaline every minute the comparison is hydrix bolts which all of the same setup and buffs hydrix bolts will give you 122 percent adrenaline a minute on average that's average proc chance with the full set of buffs and everything very high tier setup um which is to say that these give you most of the benefit of hydrix arrows but you kind of have to time it and know when to use it and so um but also you only need to activate them for 20 seconds a minute so like the idea with these is that you when you're not under a death swiftness you pop on your death spore arrows to decrease the cooldown and then stack and as soon as that proc activates, you then activate your death swiftness for free. Uh, and then you can swap back to Hydrix or something else, right? And so again, very expensive to use because you then require to have a two-handed crossbow or just, you know, some kind of crossbows yeah. in addition to the bow you're using with these. Which could just be a full set of tier 90s, right? This could be something that is less than 500 mil total, but still expensive. Um, so once but again, we've, 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 gone get... from, we've gone from entry level with Emerald Bolts all the way to talking about 500 mil setups here uh, in, right. in the span of a few minutes. And once again, this is, this is the whole spectrum that we want to show here. And you can do some, some interesting things with these where you're using three different ultimate abilities within the space of about 10 seconds. Um, like, 
puts out incredibly massive damage and then allows you to generate afterwards well over 600% adrenaline in the next 20 seconds. <laughs> um, you can do some Is crazy anyone doing adrenaline this? manipulation. I am. I'm doing okay. this when I'm trying to like do dummies and, and a lot of my solo content okay. and the raids. I've been using these. All right. Um, I unlocked my Eldritch Crossbow uh, a couple of weeks ago. I got enough money for it because it's going to die. Lovely. Um, so I've been I've been having a ton of fun. I'm just using a Noxious Longbow for these because I don't have an SGB on that account, which is hilarious. But um, <laughs> I've been going back and forth between an ECB and a Noxious Longbow to use to stack these arrows up and actually use these at like uh, raids and places because it's really easy. Each one of the Yakamaru pools is about a minute. So I pre-stack Death Spore on the central pool and then we'll activate that and like use these the rotation there. Um it's it's an incredible amount of adrenaline in, uh, that you can pump out if you can get like an incendiary shot into uh, Death Swift with a natural instinct on it, and just generate like you can generate over a hundred percent adrenaline on average with a single greater ricochet. Like, Is it's, anyone else it's doing disgusting. this? I don't think so. Okay, I've not seen anybody else using these anywhere. Um, but they they do in terms of adrenaline gain per second. They are. More efficient than Hydrix bolts. I think. I think the the reason that you're not seeing people use them is because the fractured staff of Armadillo is in the game. Yeah, people can put out uh, more damage on so, magic. More so, to so, magic. So, but, so what, yeah. I, what I'm getting so, here is, is that I I will say I think the reason the arrows aren't super popular is just that ECB is pretty good, um, and people like having it. And it's just like it's so difficult to manage how fast right. most bosses phase if you're because obviously like you, you can't switch to your bow while your ecb spec is up. no and um, most and most so, places things are dying and moving and you're you don't yeah. want to be under a death swiftness while you're doing this much damage like it just actually doesn't make sense because you would you're not going to be under that death swiftness for very long so we basically yeah. got, a, got a case and, here of a monopsony where Tannis is one of the suppliers supplying mainly to Thaxi with these arrows. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that while the arrows are very competitive with Hydrix without factoring in an ECB, I think it. I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure that it is. If you factor in owning an ECB and a Saren Godbow EOF and a Dark Bow EOF. I mean- at that point, you just do you. People are buying magic and doing more damage because the FSA yeah, is crazy. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. So like, this is the like people like me who just enjoy range. This is the like I have fun new toys because I am still ranging things with the full knowledge that there are things out there that can do better. Um, so I think if you if you don't own an ECB and can't afford to get into the magic game, I think splintering arrows are very good. Yeah, I and mean, I will be using both of these arrows. I will be using Death Spore arrows for half half of the second half of a minute to have them ready for Death Swiftness, and using Splintering arrows for the other half of the minute on my alt because one bow only, and two that is potentially best damage. Like that is going to out damage, I believe, Camping Hydrix. Actually, it's more adrenaline gain and more damage, I believe, than Camping Hydrix. Like the ECB spec is gross. And SGB spec is gross. And like all these things that that range is doing. Eldric but, crossbow and Saren godbow. By the way, if anybody was wondering what those yes. what those mean, yeah. And plus, plus, um, people are bringing um, an easy K switch for range now too for engineering. <laughs> oh my god, you're um, kidding! So no, I've I mean not, it, it's very good. I've not seen that and, yet. That's hilarious. Uh, range, That's terrifying. range has the range has the adrenaline to do it. So like oh some my. of the the like minute 40 second okay, so, kills you see the reason it's like six majors one ranger is because the ranger is easy k is easy king so, so that's I'm, amazing I'm betting, I'm betting that david wants to move on to the melee section here in just a minute because i heard that 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 word come uh, up uh, i like i like range record, more than melee that's for sure this is the, this is the tier 92 tier 95 two hand yeah that People are using on range it's kind of like when people were using saren saren godbo special attack on other combat styles because All it was right. so good. Um, Anyways, yes. One last thing. Go for it. The the cape. Yes, the Zuck cape. Igneous uh, Kelzil. Yeah. Uh, it makes Deadshot an ability that hits four times and does you know six hundred odd percent damage um, for sixty percent adrenaline only. For sixty percent adrenaline, which comparison to this is the Dark Bow, which is sixty five percent adrenaline for. 
um, when you include it underneath the death swiftness about the same amount of damage. Um, in terms of the number of time it hits. Which, yeah, and it can be lower because Vigor... I, mean, I, I don't know if like everyone is switching to a Vigor for their Debo specs. But right. Do. Um, this didn't do a ton for range. It is situationally... Uh, situationally very useful for, like, the last phase of next. It's one of those things that, like, isn't used all the time. If you don't have an EOF, this is awesome. This is a great... You now have the ability to Dark Post spec once every half minute. Um, yeah, and, which, you know... Uh, I, I've been using it a bit, and I think I honestly prefer the Dark Post spec. Well, the that, is, that is the correct... That's the correct preference, yeah. James. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. De- Deadshot good is situation... <laughs> Like, there are situations where Deadshot is slightly more damage, but unless you do a lot of PVM and thinking about it, like, it's... Dark, Dark Bow works everywhere. This doesn't yeah. work everywhere. So, like, it's just, yeah, it's It's fine. just Zaros. Zaros phase on next. That's, All right. that's where you... This uh, is Tannis, any game. questions about any uh, mid-high-level beginner range stuff before we move on to Malik that uh, this might have spurred in your head? Nope. It's all Greek to me. Oh, no, that's yeah. not good. That's not good. <laughs> Well, I hope that's not the case. I hope everybody else was able to largely understand what uh, we have just said here. And, and if not, I, I deeply apologize for that. Uh, let's move on to uh, the Malice section right now. And I threw this one in, in here, Lanakea Spear for Slayer. It's awesome. For everything. Okay. Yeah, it's oh. the most accessible. It's the first good weapon that's accessible after, like, the Dragon Rider Lance got expensive with um, Aftershock yeah. and being good. I didn't see this until you guys, like, I knew it was out, but I didn't see it being useful until you guys told me about it. Because what yeah. initially put me off was the set tier 75 accuracy. Yeah, well, but, yeah. if you want to, if you want to get your mid tier PVM set up while getting charms at the same time, you could go do trash mobs at E3 with this thing <laughs> for like 20 hours and you'll have 250 mil so it's a it's a very my, cheap way to be able to make money my main has a perked one of these that is going to be used to farm the strength pet i've got three pets to master of all that's absolutely happening in d3 my alt has one of these uh, and will not be net buying a, a scythe just i don't need one uh there, with this there's almost there's almost no reason to own a scythe this honestly. does more more damage than a scythe to anything that is poisonable and equivalent damage. The, the issue, like everybody says, is the accuracy. Um, if you have level 99 attack and you are using either some variety of overload or a turmoil or higher prayer, um, you will not miss on anything other than a very few select Slayer monsters and a handful of those like 2010 to 20. 16 kind of a few of those very high tier bosses during that time frame um most of whom you're not trying to melee anyways like again bow account hello um the the spear there's no reason for me to own a scythe the spear will do everything the yeah. scythe can do for me so um if not more damage on a lot of poisonable slayer monsters so so you're saying uh, yeah. i should get one of these and change my slayer setup out from a scythe to this and it's one of those things uh, you kind of have to judge it. I don't know if I would necessarily... Like, my main still owns a scythe. <laughs> yeah. I'm very clear about that. It's a good weapon. It's very good. Does, does it have 100% accuracy at Soul Devourers? Because if it does, you don't really need a scythe. No. many of Most of the Soul Devourers are uh, magic weakness, and so that it'll have an affinity of like somewhere in the 45 to 65 range, which is a no. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, okay, gotcha. So, so like, you cannot use it for very high tier Slayer. For like, it wouldn't work for those. It wouldn't work for a couple of the Raptor monsters. Would you um, use it as wyverns? I well, wy- wyverns aren't poisonable, if I remember correctly. I don't think um, so. No. So no. Dark beasts. Um, I would use Drygors. I would use Drygors, or even uh, the tier eighty five Glacier weapons. Actually, potentially there. Okay. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk. Or Fury those. Blades. Um, else. But yeah, Dark um, beasts, Abyssal demons. Absolutely, unquestionably, that best yeah, slot weapon for the for uh, killing those things. Yep. For Abyssal demons, yeah. Abyssal demons and dark beasts both. This is absolutely the best in slot available weapon in game to kill those things. That's not a question. All right. So the story that that we missed when the Rex Matriarchs came out then, 
And the way things seem to have settled is that the Rex Matriarchs drops, including the rings and this spear in particular, have really settled into a nice place in the uh, in the entry to mid-level PVM yeah. side of things. Well, I think the spear is like 12 mil, too. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's somewhere 12 to 15. The, the issue yeah. with the rings, of course, is that Chandler's ring and the Reaver's yeah. ring, which is magic Expensive. and hybrid, are 100 mil. <laughs> and the Champion's ring, which is the melee one, isn't useful because it doesn't you can't crit on bleeds and if you're doing a bleed build for melee it's not doesn't do anything for you oh lo and behold that's the next thing in the notes here champions Ta-da! champions so that's what we have to say about that okay the poor champions ring is not useful <laughs> um it costs yeah. 25 mil to make it you just don't get 25 mil worth of damage out of it like, the, spend your money on buying a dragor the only scenario becomes useful and i i think it might honestly be worth buying if you just have like money laying around is if they ever do something like give us an ability where every hit of bleed damage gives us one percent adren or two percent adren or something like that maybe then it it does something i don't really know i mean it's one of those things that like if you're going to like if you're running a heist you're merely set up because you just like melee and you have a grimoire because you have a lot of money because you just like running melee then i would buy it because you have crit chance it's going to activate it um and you're stacking crit on top of your already bleed build but for most people, it's it like it's not entry, it's not mid level. This is the like top tier of almost useless, but maybe, yeah, maybe one day. Cheap, so how did it end up in that position then? Um, Melee because it seems like they we... Melee is very bleed focused. Okay, because it seems they... like we've had a year where everything that they've added has amplified power, whereas this would have just fell flat. It's, yeah, card. well. Given given the price point, like so on release, no one cared about the Chandler's ring because magic was the bottom was the skeleton with the like weight attached to it in the chair at the bottom of the ocean. And I bought my Chandler's ring. Yeah, I got my Chandler's ring for like thirty mil total, including the ten rings. Um, And now it's two two twenty two forty two three hundred. I don't know. It's a ton. Um, so if it does, if there is a melee change or if it gets buffed, uh, this thing can increase by 10x easily. Um, but, you know, not everyone has 25 mil to just like, yeah. burn. Okay. So the, the the lesson out of this then should also be along with the Rex Matriarchs. If you're getting into PVM, go farm the Dagonoth Kings. Well, the Dagonoth Kings and Thentraken, because the heart of the Seer is currently 91 mil. Yep. <laughs> And that's the ring I, itself is 230. And that's who I do whenever I get uh, the Matriarch's Reaper. All right. So, of course, with Malay, everybody, everybody always comes down to, you know, we have the Tier 92 Masterwork and whatnot, of course, and everything around Malay is focused on um, the AoE abilities with the two-handed weapons. But the Arch Glacier brought the Tier 85 and Tier 95 dual-wield melee weapons. And one of the things that has put me off dual-wielding since the beginning of EOC was that there were fewer AoE attacks for dual-wielding than two-handed weapons. <laughs> and if you wanted to dual-wield with Slayer, you were missing a couple of uh, AoE abilities. But these weapons, the Tier 85 and the Tier 95 weapons from the Arch Glacier, fix that because they enable uh, abilities like Hurricane to be used with uh, dual wield. Yeah, kind of. The the Scythe and Spear have such a longer range, though. Yeah. yeah. It, it so just the range, makes because sense. A lot of higher tier Slayer monsters are greater than one by one square. It's hard to hit more than one thing with a one by with just a, you know, a one tile melee range. Which is the challenge with these, right? So like single target Damage dual wield has always been better, right? Destroy just does massively more single target damage than Hurricane does. Um, and Flurry, uh, Flurry's an adventure. Um, but Flurry is very good when used correctly. Flurry's very good when used with, correctly with the Zerk, with the Zerk um, interaction. Greater Flurry is incredibly great and useful. Regular yeah, Flurry, that, that's what I meant. That's what regular I meant. Flurry, flurry is is pretty hit or miss. Um, yeah, we don't we don't use regular Flurry, but great, Greater Flurry is very good. And it gets used kind of like Bombard does with range. Like it's the it's the threshold you only use when you hit multiple things with it. Otherwise, it's not good. Anyways, we're losing the plot. Sorry, uh, that's on me. <laughs> totally on me. Um, but yeah, so um, these are these basically add 
you use dual world when you're using your single target, right? Like if yeah. let's assume that we're not incredibly high tier yet. We're just talking like people doing Slayer. If you're doing targets that are going to be doing enough damage back to you that you don't want to be attacking multiple of them at once, then you use dual world because dual world destroy does more damage than hurricane. You don't want to aggro the things around you with hurricane. Um, so like that's like dual wield now has the ability to also use hurricane on those spread out enough single targets with these. That's cool. Um, it almost makes me want to try the tier eighty fives versus Drygors. They're similar price point um, for Slayer um, because that is a pretty good like right. You're you, you're losing five to six percent damage with those five tiers of weapon to gain hurricane damage. And is hurricane damage going to be five to six percent damage increase? Probably. So it's yeah. potential that these are like for people who are doing mid tier, low tier kind of tier ninety weapons for Slayer. These are not bad. They're they're like they're decent, right? Especially you don't you know if you've got like a if you do have the money to buy just one weapon, you've got one point five bill, you love melee, you buy a dark uh dark shard of Lang, the sword, and you buy the offhand dagger for tier eighty five and you can use those for Slayer, and that's Okay. Yeah, because the set bonus does pair it's, between uh, the tiers, so that's important. Yeah, I mean, you end up with tier ninety two damage when you do that, right? When you use the tier eighty five offhand with the tier ninety five tier ninety five main hand. Um, I, I just want to so, also point out one thing that really jumps out with the tier eighty five ones is that for people doing arch glacier normal mode, this this is a kind of weapon to me that jumps out as farmable, especially with with the needles yeah. and the glacier remnants that you can get. I think a lot of people doing arch glacier are doing zero. Uh, zero mechanic like i don't know yeah. maybe there's a bunch of people doing f- i mean five mechanic is pretty good money i guess that's that's fair people could be absolutely doing that for farming yeah, even the common drops think, that are pretty good yeah and with with the nerf it's probably better than doing low in rage place or if you want consistent decent money probably um so I love how you say nerf while they increase the drop rates for a lot of these things, but it just is harder to get the <laughs> core of Lang at low and at low and raising in kill streak, which is probably how that should have been from the beginning, but also it is a nerf to gaining the tier ninety fives. Um but yeah. So anyways, that's that's my deal with these, is that like you the tier eighty fives are I'm not going to say slept on because they're appropriately priced. Um but the tier eighty fives are nice for the lower to mid tier people. The tier ninety fives or specific bosses where you want to be doing single target damage if you don't want to be switching. Um, maybe if you're doing, like, God Wars 2. Like, it's it's a lot of, like, you don't use these at a ton of really high tier. They're like, oh, hey, I just want to have more damage. They're 3% more damage or whatever than tier 92s. That's cool. Um, in terms of using <clears throat> them as a main weapon otherwise, um, you know. They're nothing, cr- like, crazy power creep to super-duper special. Um, if you're not uh, amping a weapon. And David, I know you you said that there are two places where you spe- <laughs> you, you specifically yeah. enjoy them. Uh, yeah, two really good places. ED3, they're great at ED3 because Terraket falls over really fast because the problem with the spec is that for the most part you can't actually do high enough damage mm. to take advantage of it, but because Terraket is undead, you get to use the Undead Slayer perk, the Salve Amulet E, and uh, Undead Slayer Sigil. And so you can pump out 20k hits in phase one and just basically insta insta clear it. And um, for and then, for the record, the special attack that you're talking about is it increases the hit caps. So normally your hit cap for damage is 10,000 for normal and 12,000 for crits. And this increases it by a margin, which then increases with Smoke Cloud and with a Grimoire active to allow you to hit up to 20,000 damage at a time. Normally yeah, isn't possible like, without like a an undead slayer sigil and undead slayer perk and like you can stack a bunch of buffs that specifically damage Terracate that like allow you to yep. hit very very large numbers very consistently. Yeah, so if you want to spend two point five bill to just nuke <laughs> the the middle boss of E D three, these are a real a real good time. And then, um, and, and then, and from, then uh, is your next the one a joke? Is, uh, no, uh, the difference. Well, also tier eighty fives would be fine to be honest. But the the <laughs> difference between for hard clues, a single um, hurricane kills Yuri, whereas <laughs> assault takes longer to do. So you're like you're literally wasting ticks if you're not using cold cuts at hard for hard clues. 
Your your hard clues have to be done that 0. 0.6 seconds faster, dog. It's really important. Yeah. Or I guess every, 1.8 seconds. Yeah, every Yuri, you save 1.8 seconds if you use tier 85s instead of Drygors. I don't do a lot of clues. Is I don't it, know how many hard clues but, you hit for Yuri and... and no, but but it, it's are... the same price. It's the same price as Drygors, right? So if you're gonna do like 500 hard clues, oh. why, why would you not? You mean you mean the tier 85s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Hurricane. Oh, I thought you were talking about the tier 95s. <laughs> yeah, I thought Yuri. you were talking about well, well, the tier well, 95s oh, as well. Oh, no, but I mean, if you have them, you may as well use them. For <laughs> as well. But, I mean, like, I was about to say this is the like you're talking like the people that have bought. I know a couple people that have bought Eldritch Crossbows for 2.5 bills specifically for, yeah. to kill to kill. These are done elite clues. I'm like, okay. Okay. Yes, but, and they're running but around now, in legacy. To, yeah. Best in slot, best in slot for hard and master clues is uh is being able to hurricane Yuri. So no, not Which, a joke. I'm I'm a hundred percent serious. Yeah, I should, believe it. If you're gonna do a big hard clue run, buy these. You will have a great time, I promise. The tier eighty five. So that makes a lot of the sense. Tier that makes a lot of sense. Where would you use I the tier ninety five stare ask? I mean everywhere. Okay. Tier ninety five. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you could afford them everywhere, but like the only the only place that they're a meaningful upgrade is Terracat. Okay. okay. Uh, or if you really have a vendetta for Yuri and just want to <laughs> put him in his place, <laughs> really grave this man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, just single player stuff, right? If you're camping dual wield somewhere, like if you're if you're just chilling with like an offhand defender or something at Hellware, or like there's a few places where you could like it's just going to be best in slot damage, but yes, it's expensive. <laughs> That's it. Um, and then if we ever get another undead boss, uh, it'll be great there, or or potentially a demon boss. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, Dark Light is already, like, a tier 108 off yeah. and a tier 98 yeah. man, so like, mm. but, yeah. And then, and then for dragon bosses, Undead Slayer, or Dragon Slayer Plus, it's just not enough. It really, it's really just places you could use the salve amulet. So if they release more bosses where we could use the salve yeah. amulet, then this Forget would be the salve incredible amulet, for those. Okay. Yeah, that that's what puts it over the like, top for Terracad. The issue is that it it is challenging to break the hit cap where you right. would need the special attack, which is the only thing that sets these tier ninety five swords apart. Other than like you have hurricane now, congratulations, you do six percent more damage. If you're weapon camping, most people that are have that kind of money are not weapon camping. Already have yeah. hurricane ability, so. Um. Yeah. Uh, situationally, they're really cool. They allow you to use extra melee ability if you hurricane with them on. Um. But eh, the special attack in which would be a lot of the gain is not useful because d- we do a lot of damage, but not enough to consistently break the hit cap. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of melee and things that need to be swapped around. Uh, we need to talk about the tier ninety five sword that comes from the from Zuck, otherwise known as the Easy K or um, Exa Kill. And yeah, for for a long yeah. time, for what felt like weeks after this boss came out, it felt like it was a mythical drop. Are you are you love or hate on the aesthetic? Because I I think people either love it or hate it. I saw a third age died one the other day. I was not a huge sell on it before, but hot dang, that black edge with the white veining in the center mm. looked really good. I mean, when okay, I see when I, I see, see this when I see the sword walking around, uh, you know, back in the day they had replica god swords that they took to took to Runefest and they had props of, right? Yeah. I can totally see mm. Mod Mark walking around with one of these. Ooh, they should do that. Maybe that'll be like part of their when they bring Runefest back. That'll be how they announce the melee buff. As well as I cannot everyone walking around with those. I don't even know that you could. Even I like you'd have to put a broom handle inside of it or something to give it enough stability because the handle on this thing is teeny tiny and that blade. Even I don't know that there's a. Ooh, you have to use some real interesting materials to make that blade one liftable and like. Man, this thing is so massive. Like the I, like it's the sword. If you make that the scale, it's like five feet tall. That blade well, would perfect. be almost two feet wide. Like it's it's the size of me. Tannis, Tannis, can you get your boy Elon on it? Uh dude, I don't know. He's really busy building uh, big the um, cylind- cylinder shaped rocket <sighs> ships. 
he should he should send a 3d printed easy k to space I like think that's what we need if you heat molded plastic to the right shape you could probably do it and then you'd have to just add a whole bunch of internal structure like like a broom handle or something that would like I think you'd have trouble. Like, a god sword has a long enough handle that you can kind of manipulate it, and it's a thin enough blade. This would weigh a ton as a as a cosplay. And, and that's why you say it's strange. And that may be its best use, because hot dang, this thing is... <laughs> it does an awful lot with, of damage. It's good with range. It's good with range. Okay? I, so I just want to say that in, in looking at this, in what you produced on this, David, um, I, I just, you know, kind of sat here just looking at the screen when it says this basically requires an essence of finality to take advantage of bleed extension synergy provided by the trim masterwork spear in other words you're going to be using the trim masterwork spear as your primary weapon and you're going to be putting this in your eof so i'm going to like add a nice hefty caveat on this and try to put some positive spin Millie is in a very interesting place right now if Melee had unlimited adrenaline, if Melee had some Hydrix Bolt equivalent, Melee would rival magic in terms of damage, probably. I haven't done this math, but Melee yeah, would do it, massively it was, more damage it than it currently does. Um, and that is a good thing and a bad thing in my brain, because obviously like you have all these tools that you can't use all of at the same time, which, sorry, but Melee's Switchscape is already ridiculous, personal opinion, hear me roar. Um, but, like, Melee, of all the styles, Melee has two ability books that it pulls from. So it came into 2013, even, with more abilities than everybody else. It was the one that had Zerk. Like, Melee was king in terms of you had variety and choice, and the choices you made mattered. Um, this is one of those situations where, like, you can, I think you could camp, like, a, a pair of the tier 95 dual wield swords, the Arclaysaur swords, with one of these or a ZGS, get similar damage to, like, great. Like, you've got a whole bunch of configurations you can do, all of which use all of your adrenaline, and all of which do a lot of damage, but relatively similar damage. Like, it feels like magic and range is pretty much a, like, I can tell you, you bring these items you equip these items, you switch to these items at this time, in this order, and you do the most damage. Melee, I feel like, has options. Like, where range and major, like, this is the thing you do to do the damage. The most damage. The most efficient, most effective, technique, tactic, available damage. I forget. Melee is the, like, you can use this sword or the other big sword. Yeah, and, and I use... forget which one I was of you I was discussing this with, but it, it basically came down to the fact that there's about five different um, possible switches that you can bring, and the cost of it is just so prohibitively high. Well, I mean, a meta melee setup right now includes some number of things in EOF, plus, um, you know, a, some, a pair of dual wields, plus a pair, plus the Masterwork Spear of Annihilation, plus the ZGS or an EZK, or, you know, whatever it is, um, plus... Yeah. Like, like you end up with, I think it's five or six. Like, you've got a scythe in there for clearing things because you need scythe range or a, or a lot of chaos, um, depending on where you are. Like, you you end up with an inventory that is more switches than any other style other than a hybrid. Um, but melee yeah. just has options, right? You can set up a lot of different melee inventory setups to do similar things with very different setups. So, I don't know. I think that that's cool, but feels bad because you can't use all your toys. That anybody can get a hold of this thing. David, have you bought one of these yet? Me? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't buy gear on my my main anymore. I'll get one for my Iron Man for sure, though. Okay. At some point, right. it's just very low. It's like the lowest priority of all <laughs> these tier ninety fives. All right. Yeah. They're good. All right. <clears throat> um, three, and, but yeah. How much of an impact did it have, though? Uh, compared to where I mean, we were before Zach and close, after. In some ways, close to none in the sense that everywhere except hard mode care pack, you have to pick this or the ZGS. And while this yeah. is slightly better, it is slightly better than the ZGS. It's not like a straight buff over nothing. It's a, a tiny improvement over a weapon we already had, and you have to pick between the two. Except at hard mode care pack, where of course you get to use both, since <laughs> You can use time skip to uh, basically give melee adrenaline. 
very slightly speaking, a ZGS, you cannot move when you activate a ZGS spec, and you have the ability to do to split your damage across multiple targets. With this thing, you have to be able to attack your target for an extended period of time with your bleeds up. You have to um, have to want all of your damage on a single target. It's like those are your kind of your levers for like when do I want to use one versus and FYI, the other. FYI, the ZGS we're talking about is the Zaros God Sword, not the Zamorak Correct. God Sword. Just want to throw oh, that yeah. the, tele- the Telos yeah. weapon. Um, but like, uh, yeah, situationally you can make either work, and situationally there are tr- little triggers that make one better than the other, but. Like you say, like hard mode kill pack example, where this is you can use both, but um, and of course, this entire combat style in terms of competing with even mid tier magic or mid tier range is locked behind a 500 mil codex. It's like you, it literally can't even come close to competing with budget setups of the other two styles unless you have greater barge. Um, although once you have graded bar- greater barge, melee really becomes very interesting. Melee requires high effort though to pull that off, right? Uh, melee has much better AOE damage, as been noted with the Lanya Ks and the Scythe for things like Slayer. But in terms of single target burst damage output, um, you need barge, and then you have to be really paying attention to your rotations. Like melee is one of those that benefits more than any other style off of full manual because. Tracking your ability cooldowns and knowing exactly when to use what um, is more of a skill with med melee because you have a wider array of options. Yeah, and, like, and it, it kind of requires switching more than any other because cleave and, and decimate don't share a cooldown. So it, it it weirdly is like the most important of of all the switching you might do. That's like maybe the most important. So it's it's the highest yes. effort style for the it's the highest effort for the lowest damage right now. Well, side yes, correct. Yeah, you'd get higher effort on doing these wild ammo switches for range, or wild yeah, yeah that's spell fair. spell and four ticking switches for magic, which magic is off the wall. Um, but in terms of like being able to do baseline damage for high end PVM, melee is the highest for that baseline damage. Melee is the highest. You can pull off no ammo switching, and you can pull off you know G conk camping. The other styles. Really, you kind of have to be doing a two-hand dual switch with barge and timing your barges. And this raises a big question that I had with this going in. Is it's for me? It seems obvious where I might use magic, where I might use uh, ranged. But for me, unless it's something that is relatively low level, speaking from my perspective, like God Wars One, like the Queen Black Dragon, or anything of that tier, I. I don't see a use for me to use melee right now. Slayer. Well, no, you don't do Slayer. a lot of Slayer lately. Yeah, Slayer but... is, is one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that... if, someone, if someone doesn't have much EP other than buying tier 85s for hard clues, I wouldn't spend any money on melee right now. Unless melee you're good. just doing Slayer, I guess. Then get a spear. I would use melee it. for some elite dungeons just for the mobility of having bladed dive. That um, makes sense. If you're going I guess. to try to camp a style, you don't want to bring bladed dive switches. I would do similar things for something uh, like a fight cave or fight kiln potentially. Then you have to bring a scythe range for Jad because getting meleeed by Jad is bad. Um, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Um, but because you do have access to the AoEs, anywhere that you're fighting a horde or moving around a lot. Um, like barrows, you can do melee barrows because you don't have to worry about accuracy. That's another one, yeah. Regular barrows, but like oh, all of the tens of people doing barrows, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like, yeah. um, not. So all right. uh, y- let's yeah. talk about the yeah. cape then, um, which we talked about uh, the magic cape so far, and the cape that comes from Zuck once again, best in slot. Wait, did we did we skip Halberd? I mean the dragon halberd change? Oh, I chucked that yeah. in at the at the end. I there. chucked that uh, in under miscellaneous. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. We Let's should we that. should make a note that um for the essence of finality users of the world who do not want to spend six bill to put something into their essence of finality, um the best single target melee damage uh, is uh, ability is dragon claws, but very close to it is now the dragon halberd. 
uh, patch note a couple weeks ago that nobody mentioned or said anything about. Um, Dragon Halberd we did. does more damage, yeah, we did, than, uh, than a Dragon Dagger or Dragon Mace, uh, and does an AoE sweep in front of you that does do scythe range. Um, it effectively is great for, like, Slayer and for any of these places where you're doing large clear, like we're talking about, any AoEs. If you're using a Halberd range weapon, having a Dragon Halberd spec in your EOF will do go a very long way. Um, it's, got recently. it's great, great for P four, great for P four solo. It makes room skipping really easy. Also, uh, for it's 30, uh, thirty adrenaline, thirty adrenaline instead of fifty is pretty relevant. If you're doing melee Telos for some reason, clearing minion clear for that, minion clear for racks on P three. If you're learning racks, um, dragon halberds are fairly cheap. If you have an EOF and you're trying to do these things, uh, it's just good minion clear. It's good Slayer clear. All right, yeah, that's good we mentioned that. Um, how do you guys feel about uh, the cape, specifically with how it impacts overpower? Cape, cape is, Useless. just like everything else in Melee, it's fantastic in theory, but terrible yeah. because we don't, have, we don't have the Adren to use it. If we had the Adren to use it, it'd be sick, but we, we don't. So the only time you get to use it is if you get a Relentless proc. What I'm going to say about these capes is if you... The capes are something that if you are familiar with the Zuck front, or if you are, if you really, um, if you don't have a lot of money, if you're running an alt, if you're, you know, a true, like, mid or new tier PVMer and you don't have a ton of money laying around to buy um, these tier, like, buy a Zaro's God's Order, buy an EZK, um, you may need an adrenaline dump. Decide and that's the boat that I was in, and that's why I said yeah. I find the use of overpower sometimes comical at things like God Wars 1 or the Queen Black Dragon. Yeah, if you if you don't have an EOF with a good we- melee weapon in it, it, it actually right. is pretty useful. It's, melee has a lot of adre- uh, dumps that cost an incredible amount of adrenaline, and money. So if you don't have the money, but you still have a lot of adrenaline, the cape is the cape is potentially useful. So we'll put it in there for like the mid tier folks, right? Um, get a ZGS sooner rather than later if you choose to melee a lot of things. But the cape is nice. Yeah, like you say. And if one of those things, Queen Black Dragon phases have 25,000 health, it's one of those, like an SGB or one of these specs, just like, oh, there's half of it. It's yep. gone. Bye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's good at, it's very good at hard mode care pack because yes. the adrenaline is uh, less of an issue. And, like, uh, and once again, we need you to... Watch, or, you finish your point, then I'll say what I was going to say. Yeah, so if you, if you watch Luca's melee hard mode rotations, <laughs> he's using overpower pretty often when it comes up, just yeah. because he has the adrenaline for it. Luca is a magician who somehow generates more adrenaline than I think is possible in a lot of situations. <laughs> <laughs> what um, I was going to say was that when it comes down to it at the end of the day, we are dealing with these capes that the base capes come, of course... Um, from Hurricane at uh, at the, at the upgraded fight kiln in Sar City, mm-hmm. right? And then all you need right. to do is you need to de- defeat Zuck three times, which you you can do with practice, and you got all of a sudden the best in slot capes in the game, right? And I think that's also a worthy story of twenty twenty one. And like Zook is one of those things that for RS three, like you, I think most people who have done some amount of PVM, if you're comfortable at a rack store or at one of those equivalent level bosses, I mean, you you have to kind of accept that you'll spend several hours prepping for Zuck <laughs> if you're not a high tier PVMer. Like if you just spend if you spend six hours dying to Zuck, you will absolutely get a kill and get the capes, right? Like it is something you can absolutely grind and do and learn. Um, it is very much a learning process to get through those raves, waves while saving supplies. So, um, yeah, go back and listen to listen to the guy that we made on this. Yeah, and you um, know, and and that's exactly that's exactly what happened uh, for me on that. Is that it started slow? It took, like you said, a few hours to get the first kill. But lo and behold, we're at the point now where we're basically not using any food until we get to Zuck. And it just takes time and practice. But Mali, I think, ends the year in a interesting spot where a lot of you people on the high end, I'm talking to you, David, want something more for it going into the future. But I, I think Jagex is probably a little bit scared to give that to you. Uh, 
see. I mean, I think they know it's a problem. I mean, it's 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 bizarre yeah. that they released a best in slot weapon that a has to be instantly put in an EOF and b is almost not even an upgrade given that it's a direct trade off with the previous best in slot weapon. So I think I think we need two things. I think we need planted feet to once again work with Zerk, and we need some way for melee to gain adrenaline. And I think those two changes will make it so we have three very similarly powered styles. I'd agree with that. All and, right. And just to like, as you mentioned, Shane, like it's melee is just in a different place right now. Melee is very bleed focused. Melee is focused on doing a lot of damage over times and stacking them. Seems like in terms. Compared to range and magic, which are focused on adrenaline generating tremendous amounts of adrenaline and then activating critical strikes as often as possible, um, Respectively, melee of still course. rewards those. No, yeah. both of those. Okay. They both styles generate incredible amounts of adrenaline and and use a lot of critical strikes um, when used. I think in the proper rotations, and melee just doesn't have the thing to synergize off of those. Melee does not generate the adrenaline or benefit as much off of the critical strikes, especially with all the bleeds. Um, so it's a very different combat style right now, which is interesting. All right. Well, um, Tannis, any thoughts, questions, anything you'd like to ask us? <laughs> nope. I mean, melee is still probably as inefficient as it is. It's my style for Slayer. Yeah, and like, it should be. Yeah, I mean, it's great for Slayer. Uh, okay, and, and I don't really do you know, a whole lot else. Um, the thing that, the, the reason I, I like melee so much is because it's the only, um, it, it's the only combat style that you can make your own stuff through. Right, the, the tier 92 armor. Mm. Yeah. Even, yeah. even like the, uh, the masterwork spear is, is yeah. all skilling. It's created through skilling. Is there's no PDM involved in that mm-hmm. drop? Well, I guess the masterwork parts of it you do actually need Torva, don't well, you? Well, yeah. I mean, you could G that if you wanted to, but but yes, like I mean, the base spear even, yeah, tier ninety, tier ninety entirely off of skilling. No, it's it's true, yeah. I think right, it's and, 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 and with can, that, create... and maybe we're underselling it a bit because I think you could probably do any of the, you could definitely do any of the Elder God Wars bosses with you know a a decent melee setup that doesn't have all those bajillion switches that we just talked about. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It just, it just won't be as good as like a budget magic setup. Yeah. Like, yeah. Point. When I go to these things, I would absolutely just bring either a Lanikea or a, you know, a pair of Drygors or something and just, and be totally fine. I don't do melee with the 5 billion switches thing. I just don't, I haven't sunk the time into learning the combat style like that. But, you know, like David says, I show up with a tier 88 ports wand and ports, orb and you know some Saren core armor and <laughs> I'm out doing his damage when he's camping a site or something so yeah. and that's and that's the um, story it's it's just a question of uh relativity I guess between the styles so yeah. all right pre pre FSOA it was good hybrid um but now it's mm-hmm. and now it's it's still good hybrid it's just like the one thing melee always had was burst damage and now it is no longer the king of burst damage <laughs> Yeah. All right. So you mentioned you mentioned uh, four little letters there. F S O A. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But before we do that, I'll just thank our Patreon supporters for this episode and this week. I'd like to thank Amos Reed, Adris C, Arvid Zell, Christian S, Chunk the Monk, Cook Me Plucks, Diana, Drama Free, Duramax, Ello Matey, Free Milk, Jade Gizmo. Jason S, Jeebus, Jesse W, Kesky Plays, Lucky Ducky, Nate the Great, Pernasius, Renhawk, Ricky A, Samuel FL, Scott DFs, Seth W, Singer, Stabeev, The Bears OP, The Naked Captain, The Lion, Tom V, Zachary M, and Zant. And this week it's a, it's a really big and special week here around Patreon because we are closing in on that $200 mark that will Yay. unlock the next. Just hang on. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, thank you for the support while well, Shane's pulling up whatever he's looking for. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be quite the milestone and I can't wait for you guys to see what we have, uh, 
in in the works for that but nonetheless if you guys want to join us help us get there we're only a few dollars away right now probably have a preview for this in january given that we're this close to it but uh for as little as a dollar a month you gain access to the entire back catalog of monthly bits that um raises a, a lot of questions and has a lot of fun discussions about uh core runescape this past month tanis and i had one where we where we raised some rather uncomfortable questions, didn't we? It was uh, it was another good one. Yeah, so. <laughs> love them or hate them, it was a good one. <laughs> and there's so many like that, all available in the catalog. Uh, perfect thing to do over Christmas. Check it out at Patreon.com/slash RSBNB. But we also have the VIP tier for three dollars a month, where you gain access to a special Discord rank and stereo versions of the show, and of course the Insider tier for five dollars a month, where we're uh, you get early access to the clips that we used to make the clip show at the end of the year, which is just around the corner. So you're closing in on an, on another year where you're going to have early access starting from January. But nonetheless, thank you. Thank you, everybody, uh, so much for bringing us this far. And uh, we've, we've got a lot of work to do in 2022, and it's, and it's going to be a fun one. So thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Mm. All right. So. Magic. Magic. We already <laughs> talked about the Channeler's Ring. Or no, we didn't talk about the Channeler's uh, Ring. Not really. No. It, it no. got mentioned. It's expensive. That's all we talked about with it. Yeah, we're back at yeah. we're back at the Rex Matriarchs. <laughs> hey. So I just need to point out, and you know, reading the tin of this ring, the Channeler's Ring, even I know that this is one that people are gonna be jumping up and down about. Well, we didn't know that when it came out. No, but we know, now, like, we know now. We know now. 4% critical strike chance per hit when casting Four. channeled magic abilities. So these yeah. are things like your greater concentrated blast, your asphyxiate. Um, I don't know what the other ones are. <laughs> the The biggest offender with this lately for the people with a lot of money is the Armadale Battle Staff, not to be confused with the Fractured Staff of Armadale. This is the Armadale Battle Staff that is received from a hundred shards of Armadale dropped by the Glacors in the Glacor Cave after Ritual of Majorat. It is the longest, most number of channeled hits of a magic ability. I believe it's either four or five. I don't five. use magic, clearly. Five. Yeah, which means the last hit of this has an additional 20% critical hit chance. Sure does. <laughs> Sure does. Sure stacks nicely with some of the other updates to magic that have come out that we will discuss momentarily. Yeah. Can we just take if, a moment uh, to mention how absurd this, thing, this is? If this thing came from a boss that was like Raksha difficulty, it'd be over max cash. Yes. Easily. I think easily uh, over max cash. Like we were saying, when the Rex Matriarchs were announced, I pre-bought a bunch of series rings. I bought 10 series rings for 200k apiece. <laughs> Um, yeah. because I'm just like I will maybe eventually want these they're upgrades I might as well just buy them because they're cheap and I figure they'll rise um, and I got this ring because I got the heart for it uh, about a week after release for I think 2 mil I think I spent 4 mil on this ring <laughs> because nobody was using magic it was Gricko was out everybody was selling their magic gear it's a wild Ooh. decision <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah you think you could have picked up Appraisals for like <laughs> five hundred for the wand, three fifty for the core at one point. Absolutely, oh. less, less. The wand dropped down to four hundred. The core was <laughs> the core was more. The core was more because people were buying them to use them. Oh, so that's true. The yeah, core was yeah, five hundred. Yeah. The wand yeah, was like three fifty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Wild. I'm over, but still, oof. Yeah. No, and so and here we are. So yes, channels ring lovely. I don't have anything else on this, David. Uh, yeah, so it's fantastic. Um, even if you can't afford an FSOA, uh, if you staff can afford this, yes, if you can't afford this and an Armadale Battle Staff, or just like farm the Armadale Battle Staff yourself, or farm this yourself, it, I, I've done it on an Iron Man. It really does not take as long as you think it does. Um, and you could kind of AFK. Um, what's the name of our main friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thin, but the, thin oh, Thin Trocken, yeah. No, the the king. The uh, which king is it that drops it? Oh, um, in the blue one. You just killed the yeah, blue the one. blue one. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a single square you could stand on that with Nox bow range you could actually AFK it. Um, oh. 
So it, it really is not that hard to get yourself. People I think just, it's sup- you'll just don't want to do it. I think it's Supreme. I think it's Dag Supreme, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think Prime, it's Supreme I think Prime too. is the range one. Yeah, Supreme is correct. So it, even if you don't have the big weapon, um, this still makes the EOF by itself very, very strong. Or the Armadale Battle Staff is a tier 88, which you can't use Greater Concentrator, which we'll get to too, with it. But like, that's tier 88 with this is pretty good. Like in terms of as a weapon that you can farm yourself, given ritual, the Majorette is pretty pretty high rex. But and it's also worth noting uh, that the fragments only come from the glaciers in the cave and not the glaciers on the uh, uh, glacier front. front. Yeah, which is sad, but I don't know why. I don't know why that decision was made. But it's okay. I think, they, I think at the time the, the staff of Armadillo was like eighteen mil. Yep. People didn't realize, like, it took people a while to figure out that the channeler's ring worked with that. Like, I think a lot of the special techs that aren't regularly used have been taking a while for people to realize they're really good. Like, I think the same thing can happen with the Dragon Halberd. People are eventually going to get the word out there. I mean, more people will use it. But, like, right now, they're still cheap. And given they're sold by a store. But, um, like, I think it just took, it took, like, a month and a half or so for people to realize, one, the FSA, well, because they took away the FSA spec. And they re added it like a month and a half later. So, like, once they re added that, then it took a couple weeks for this to happen. So, when the Glacier Wars first came out, it fracked the Armadale Battle Staff, the one that you make, was like, oh, cheap. You know, it was less than 50 mil. If I remember correctly, I may not know. It might have been like 70 or 80, actually. Because it, it was still, t- it takes a while to yeah. farm one. But, um, like, even then, it, it, it was. Cheapish. It's like, okay, so, it's in a reasonable place. There's no reason for people to want these, and now there is. So let maybe me just add. summarize then the Channeler's Ring, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong on this. You combine the Armadale Battle Staff and an Essence of Finality with the Channeler's Ring, and you got an extra 20% magic crit chance. Yes? Only on the last hit. The so last it hits hit. five okay. times. On the fifth hit, you do. Um, which, those hits are not incredibly large on their own. Um, so, like... The Channeler's Ring is really good because it allows you to get crits. So you use it with that Armadale Battle Staff in the meta high tier scenario, which is what we'll discuss with this. So like, um, it gives you on average, you know, that extra two. Th- uh, it gives you an extra crit or so. Which a free crit is a free fractured staff of Armadale spec. Like you get a free auto attack, which again, yeah. like, we're kind of mixing lines here, but that's that's yeah. You get a free auto attack off of it, and that auto attack could also crit. Like, like, you. The thing is that when this happens with the fractured staff armada, which I'm just gonna like jump into it because it's hard to discuss one without the other right now. Yeah. Um, the fractured staff of armada is special attack, right? Um, this would be the first thing. The next magic update that came out was um, oh, the ancient magic. Yeah, Holy we should Holy. talk about the ancient magics first, then we'll move on let's, to on to the note on. Yeah. Front. Let's let, let's combine um, these two just okay. quick though, because I think it is worth worth discussing them at All the right. same time. Um, go for it. On a, okay, I'll go. Um, so like the fractured staff armadillo, every time you, the special attack on it, right? Every time you critically strike, it fires an auto attack, which uses a ton of runes. Just to be totally clear, it's very expensive to run this. It's an expensive staff to begin with. Um, but the the like the point to note here is that with the Staff of Armadale, it the way that the Chandler's Ring stacks is that it is it adds a crit buff to everything that fires off until the next ability hit. And so when you're using the the Fracture Staff of Armadale with this, you your auto attacks that fire off at the same time as that last hit of the Armadale Battle Staff, the Glacier Weapon one. Like the last hit of that will have twenty percent crit chance, but also every auto attack fired off at that same time will have twenty percent critical hit chance, and so those autos can then crit again and cause more autos, and so it is very much a like self propagating self self replicating it, it's yeah. a self replicating cycle that like promotes itself. Does and that, so having does that more feel crit like chance, a bug? No, I mean no. I, the way that the was, ring it, is. The ring it, gives you a buff on your buff bar that yeah, says you now have also, this many more crit chance. Okay. The ring. Yeah, and when they changed the staff, they explicitly explained their right. intentions, and that we we know that this is explicitly intended. Now, whether that was a good idea is up for debate, but this is explicitly intended. So, like, basically, this is you get increasing return on investment when you use channeled abilities with the staff because of the ring. 
Because the ring effectively jumps you. The highest, I believe, possible crit chance in the game is either like 49, 47, 50. It's somewhere in the around 50% range. Using the channeler's ring with max other crit boosts and everything. And so you hit 50%. You can get a lot of extra, extra like firings of auto attacks out of the staff. Off of even though the the fifth hit of the Armadale battle staff isn't big on its own, so when it crits, it doesn't do terribly much more damage. But you also can get one, two, like you'll average, I think, two additional auto attacks off of that last hit at fifty percent crit chance. That that's how that math works out recursively. Recursive. That's the word I think. You get recursive. Yeah, game. recursive. So, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, so th- that's why the Chandler's Ring is really disgusting, and that that Chandler's Ring will also, when we talk about Greater Concentrated Blast, which I will not bump ahead, Chandler's Ring also works with that in that that is three hits, so the third channel hit of that ability will have 12% additional crit chance, and you're using that every five seconds. So, Chandler's Ring, having that extra crit chance couples with the staff very well to give you quite a few more critical hits than you would otherwise get. And once again, I feel like we didn't know this when the Rex Matriarchs came out. Well, we didn't, these things we didn't were released. Yeah, we yeah. didn't know that, that like they we were gonna. We didn't know what we were us going. An older artifact. Yeah, magic was kind of in the trash bin, and at that point, the fractured staff of Armadale. Wow, the Armadale battle staff. Sorry, with the special attack, might have just been doing more damage than a Nox staff with this. But again, nobody was going to do that math. Yeah, saw the string it was, was like, oh, crit chance. I guess that's cool. I, it went that from, I checked the this. graph, um, and it went from 15 mil to over 200. It was it was 15 mil. Okay, I thought it was really yeah, cheap. Yeah, I, I looked. It was 15 mil before this stuff came out, and now it's over 200. I'm going to price check this real quick. Because... All right. And this is really interesting to me because when you look at this, I remember back in the day when we first started talking with you, David, having you on the show, um, we were in the era of um, C4T AA, continuous four tick auto attacking, and then later four tick oh, auto attacking. And you used magic as the sweaty combat style to get the the obscene high amounts of DPM, like of course, that was then changed over yeah. to ranged and Greco and whatnot. But now here we are. We're actually talking about doing this sort of thing legitimately, legitimately with magic. Yeah, they gave us a way, way, way better version <laughs> of C4T that is easier to use. C4T <laughs> was almost impossible without macros. You had to be much better than Tick Perfect to be continuous. Four Tick auto attacking. It's one thing. Continuous was actually disgusting. There was uh, there was someone who was doing it with um, uh, without any key bound weapons. He was she like she got good enough clicking. to do it. Yeah. Do it f- just from clicking. So it, it is possible. Just like you just like, spend, really need a new spend a bunch of hours at a dummy. <laughs> Yeah, I so I actually went through four mice um, during the C4T era because um, <laughs> it, like it my like I got I hit the because it's like every mouse has a certain number of clicks in its lifetime. I hope um, they, I I they weren't scimitars. Uh, every one of them was. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> yeah. Well, I got so, I, they they gave me a new one though because okay. I would like burn through a scimitar in like two months, and they sent me a new one. Like, We're why, talking why about the Corsair scimitar gaming mouse that has a value of yeah. about 120 US dollars. Yeah, and, yeah. Went and for clarity, four. you need to have like the inputs for continuous Fortic auto attacking. You are switching roughly every every ability, to your wand, and back to your staff. So in yeah. in three game ticks, in, or in, I guess four game ticks in this case, are reapplying yourself to the boss and swapping weapons twice so that you can fire auto attacks out of your staff and use your want like like it is is a it was disgusting it was all right bad. did you did rough. you get the price check oh it yeah it's it's a little under 200 it's actually okay. dropping recently oh, okay interesting 177 but it was 200 a couple weeks ago all right oh okay so and anything else on on that synergy or do you want to move on to the ancient magics now <clears throat> we'll we come back to ancient magics the ancient magics are humongous. There's two, yeah, that's what, two big pieces here, yeah. It's like... It's just, go for it. I don't know. I, well, no, it's fine. Yeah. All right. I'll take it then. And, you know, this this came from a quest of all things. City of Sintist and the ancient yes. magics there. Um, I think the one that everybody jumped up and down the most about was Animate Dead, which made so many things easier 
in that it effectively provided a flat up uh, damage resistance buff based on the number of uh, pieces of tank armor that you're wearing in their armor stats. Um, and, you know, even to this day, whenever I go to one of the Zuck runs, that's, that's what I do with magic. And it, and I think this also was the point at which we started to see magic being nud, nudged into that tank category officially. Just yeah. so wild. Because for the, whatever for a game time. is magic is your mage, your tank. <laughs> No, nowhere. Yeah, everywhere else may just squishy. They're the people in cloth armor. Um, for us, our cloth yeah, armor just happens to have a ton of gems on it. Um, it. Yeah, it's hilarious to me that our, our given melee has true masterwork, and so melee can be tanky, but in terms of m- purely mitigating damage, magic is by far and away king right now. Um, even without the upgrade to like crypt and everything. Um, which, again, we'll get to jumping the gun, but like the uh yeah yeah i painted a good picture on that after but let's just you know put anime dead off to the side made things a oh. lot uh more tankable yeah. um exsanguinate how do you guys feel about this one uh this powerful blood and single target for most spell. for most high level rotations it's not really used um it could be like it, it like, like rotations can probably improve with the use of it it's definitely Opt- really, really nice if you're optimally doing budget. Yeah, the stacks on it don't fall off for twenty to thirty seconds, so which is five times the amount of time you need to swap to. Like optimally speaking, that twelve percent additional damage on basic abilities, like reasonably compared to every all the other damage you're doing on magic with auto attacks, especially these days. Um, it twelve percent basic ability damage isn't huge. For sl- th- this is the Slayer ability. This is the like, this is a huge upgrade to Slayer to to me. That's what this is used for, because you can kind mm-hmm. of sit at twelve stacks on yourself and never not really need to consume them, and have very cheap rune cost for Slayer. And Dara asked, have... how do you do that? Um, I mean, you're just so it's. I think we need to have a conversation at some point later. We'll do a show on ability rotation building. Um, you build a magic ability rotation that never uses rack. Okay. It is absolutely doable. Um, you need to be either paying a little bit of attention or have a lot of ability unlocks. Um, if you throw all of your other basic abilities onto a, onto a bar and you want to revo this, uh, you can, like with Sacrifice and Tuska and Corruption and Econk, which again, this is the one time when, like I said, channeled abilities take an extra tick afterwards as a pause, and so you can kind of leverage that to extend your ability to bar to be longer than it otherwise would be. Right. Okay. Um, which loses you an, a good bit of damage, especially if you're using it regularly. Um, putting greater concentrated blast early on a bar and doing those things, you can you can pretty easily avoid rack. Yeah, and um, and, I, and I imagine Magma Tempest will, of course, come into that uh, later with an interesting discussion when we get to that. Not point. needed. I actually did some testing. Okay. On it. It's not required. It does help. I okay. Mean, it, it, anyways, yeah. So um, we can have that conversation at a totally different time. But it sounds yeah. like a good thing uh, for a micro lesson. Uh, Exsanguinate, uh, very useful for Slayer. It does good damage. Um, if you swap to it every once in a while, just to like use one spell, use one ability on that and then swap back to um sight fear which we'll talk about next i imagine um you can you can keep both abilities fully stacked and get the benefit of both um that is very sweaty that is like napkins under elbows levels of sweaty (laughs) um but for the people if you really want to put out max damage that is a thing that you can do um i've been a lot of places camping at sanguinate for the low rune cost and then for bossing like uh, god wars 2 kind of tier bossing uh, where I'm just bringing a wand orb and a shield and like not worrying about crazy switches or anything. Yeah. And, on four tickets. You know, let me actually um, say this. Last time I went to do the Dinosaur Slayer, no, it was the Vile Blooms, um, mm-hmm. I did the exact same thing with Exsanguinate and I just removed uh, Rack and Rune from the bar. And it was good Yeah, enough. you gotta be, you do have to be careful with those bars because you will lose a lot of damage if you start auto-attacking. Um, but again, a, a thing for a different day. Yeah. Um, the bottom line with this is like, you can just camp exsanguinate for low cost of use. And like once a minute, I was swapping, or like I think like five, ten seconds over to Insight Fear. And, you know, it would stack itself up in like a greater concentrated blast, which is three hits and, you know, a couple of other basics. And then just tsunami. And then just swap back. 
Um, look, once a minute, very easy switch. Like this is if you wanted to get into switching and you, getting used to switches, once a minute switches are the way to do it. Um, and so those kind of spell switches or planted feet, um, very low input, but you get a like saving sixty percent adrenaline and getting a free tsunami, which then will give you a bunch of adrenaline back as you crit. It'll give you ten percent adrenaline, right? Um, so uh, yeah, spell switching with these is low effort but pretty good damage increase. Um, so right. that's what I think. This and is and of course we've been dancing around this for a few minutes now. So I'll just say let's talk about insight fear. Because that lowered the adrenaline yeah. requirement for Tsunami. Uh, has a 5x5 five five AoE uh, passive that ding, deals ding, ding. damage up to 8 yes. enemies. And, you know, you can combine that with Tsunami, Greater Chain, Dragon Breath, and everything yeah. else. And you get this interesting magic AoE setup. Yeah. I'm interested to see kind of David's take on this. The, the high-tier PVMer opinion is and i think generally i think you could just say it's true is the insight fear is the stronger if you're going to camp a spell insight fear is the stronger the two with that five by five aoe is huge um one it can crit um. on eight targets <laughs> well there's that um we're talking about crits that that's a thing um and then just like having tsunami be cheap saves you a ton of adrenaline and tsunami like we said gives you a ton of adrenaline so this spell is the reason that magic has adrenaline to burn on special attacks and other things right now. This spell is it. It's the like the ability to use tsunami on cooldown and not spend a ton of adrenaline on it and generate a ton of adrenaline by critting with the tsunami buff active. It's adrenaline generating a ton of adrenaline for magic. Yeah, I mean in terms of PVM, it's no other spells even close. Uh, if you don't have a staff of fractured staff. But you want to do mage? It's insight fear is by insight fear by itself with nothing else is still really really good. And, and I will say that I can second that. Um, you know, just using a tier ninety wand with the tier eighty eight ports offhand uh, in all in all the Zuck runs I've done. That's been the exact same setup that I've done as the AOE setup that's been described here, and it. Hands down, you combine that with, as we mentioned, um, Corruption Shot and uh, Greater Concentrated Blast, which we'll talk about in, uh, up, up next, actually, is, is, is actually pretty darn good. So, Just like, if you're talking single, like, f- from, from the outset, from like the outside, I guess, looking at these, at these spells, like, Exsanguine Rate, in a theory, has really good single target damage, and it's not until you get that adrenaline buff from Tsunami that you realize that Insight Fear is actually just better damage overall. Uh, Insight Fear otherwise is, like, I get to use Tsunami and I get this AoE, the 5x5 five five AoE. Yeah. Those two things are just like, okay, I have good wave clear, but if you're on something like Vindicta, where you're only attacking a single target, um, this seem a little lackluster, but again, that adrenaline buff, like, that is, it's the hidden bonus from this that is tremendous so that that's where this is the winner for yeah and you know once again it it seems like that word adrenaline keeps popping up in all the different three segments that we've done so adrenaline is damage yeah. adrenaline yeah, is damage is that's what it is 20 2021 is the year of adrenaline for sure that's and actually crits. a really interesting way of putting it and crits which crits generate adrenaline because incendiary shot and tsunami exist um, um smoke cloud Smoke uh, smoke cloud's good. Um, you should use it. There's no reason not to. It's cheap to use, and if you're going to Voln, you may as well smoke cloud. It's not as good as Voln, obviously. It's about a three percent damage increase, I think. It's good. Rock styles. It's great for magic. Yeah, smoke cloud is the yeah. one that increases your max hit, I believe, right? Or what does it do? I, I don't know yeah. what it says. Yeah, it gives you like three to six percent damage increase. It gives the other people who are attacking a boss three to six percent damage increase, depending on which style you're using. Uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's like it's one of those things, kind of like volume bombs. You just chuck it on a target once a minute. Okay. Yeah. And and once again, further pushes magic in towards that tank support kind of class. And I know this is locked by Livid Farm, but because it's here, I believe you can stick it on. They made it so you could stick. Uh, it on borrowed power, so you can use vulnerability bombs and use um, borrowed power. So you don't even need to spell book swap if you're using lunars for disruption shield or for something. Oh yes, else. I did see that. That is true. Um, so a borrowed power, it just costs you a couple of uh, extra runes to chuck a vuln on this or chuck a smoke load on something. It's good. Yeah, it's fine. All right. 
Then, of course, we pivot over to the node on front. Um, I'm going to quickly mention the Carapac wrist wraps, tier 85 magic power gloves. Um, after using Dragon Breath, they buff the damage uh, from Combust by 25%. And when these came out, I think the what we said on the show was that they should be used if your target is not poisonable and you're doing magic. But now, David, do you feel otherwise? Uh, I mean, I think it's obviously kind of sweaty. It's it, it, they're good <laughs> enough to justify a, a sweat. Okay, glove switch. emphasis on glove sweat. But like, I don't know. I, I mean, you don't have to do that. Uh, use cinder banes if choosing between the two, obviously, but they're very very strong. It's it's free um, damage. They're, if you want to just they're pitch, a hell yeah. of a lot. If you're a budget player, they're way cheaper than cinder banes, um, and not oh as good, God, yeah. but still very good. These are the magic equivalent of nightmare gauntlets for ranging. And, they I, way way cheaper and better. And I think, and I could be wrong here. I believe that it's not in the tooltip, but I believe these have an accuracy buff as well to one of the abilities they impact. Um, I think it's like either ten or twenty five percent accuracy buff, which I think it might isn't be huge. I think so. I believe which yeah. combust doesn't. That's interesting. Anyways, that that but, would be. Kind of um, under the table I believe they were they they said they were coded in a similar way so that actually all the tier eighty five gloves um, similar to like how the um, know for a fact that the ranging boots the fleeting boots have uh, from Raksha have a an accuracy buff to um, rapid fire which isn't stated yeah. anywhere but but they are coded the same way as the nightmare gauntlets in terms of allowing you to move while using the ability and they just copied over the accuracy buff as well. I do not believe yep. that was ever removed, and I know it was present. So, um, but anyways, yeah, these gloves are good. If your target is poison immune, you don't have, or you don't have cinder bands, they're an awesome. They're power armor. Um, it's one of those things that, like, there are, I think, occasionally times when Dominion Tower gloves are potentially better than these, and we'll come back to those. I'll mention them again in a minute, so we can, we can table that. But um, yeah, good. I think. I think that if you're very low budget, I would buy, buy these before upgrading from subjugation to tier 80 power armor. They're they're very nice. I agree. I absolutely agree. And I would even potentially buy these prior to Cinder Bane if you're doing a lot of magic on Slayer and stuff. They're really great for Slayer because they allow you to just do some extra damage. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, great. Great ability. Yeah. I mean, All right. We didn't have a lot to say in these in the first place. They're good damage. Yeah, yeah that's it, the thing. Fairly simple. Okay, greater concentrated blast, and this was, I think, when Queen. things really started to change. Uh, when we had these discussions, when the note on front came out, does a lot more damage than regular concentrated blast. Does it one tick faster? And at the launch of the note on front, we were of the opinion that if you took a greater concentrated blast magic setup and you compared it to a range setup where there was no greater ricochet you'd feel that you had more power with the greater concentrated uh, Yeah, way better. I mean, it, it was arguably about equivalent to greater ricochet, even if you had that, but certainly way better than no greater ricochet. And like, the thing to note with this ability is that it is channeled, so if you don't cancel it, if you don't uh, queue an ability afterwards, if you don't use an ability directly when it finishes, uh, you, you were, your character will pause for a game tick, so it will be take four ticks with greater concentrated blast, five ticks with regular concentrated blast to use. So, concentrated blast is not an efficient ability on its own uh, in any way, shape, or form, because it takes, again, on revolution, it takes three seconds to use, It take, it's those three hits. Greater concentrated blast does 50%-ish more damage, just flat out when it hits things. Those hits come out one tick faster, so you can use it in 1.8 seconds when you cancel things afterwards. So effectively, if you use the ability queuing system in the game, which has a history of glitches we don't need to go into, um, <laughs> frankly, um, I, I have it on currently because I enjoy it, but it's it causes problems. That should just be noted. Um, if you use ability queuing, you can queue an ability to go off. You don't need to be precise or tight with your timings. Just whenever your greater concentrated blast starts, you just click another basic ability, the next one on your bar, the next one that you should be using, whatever it is, or your threshold, and it will just fire off when greater concentrated blast is done after 1.8 seconds. It will skip that extra tick. Um, it's saving you a bunch of time and doing more damage. This ability is nuts, disgusting, broken, everybody. This makes mid-tier magic 
better than mid tier all of the other styles, in my personal opinion. Um, like if mid tier, we're gonna say you've got like 500 mil to spend on gear. This is this is one of the things. Even if you have like 300 mil, I would so use this. I, I can actually make it a bit simpler for you. Um, I've been I've been you know it, with this talking magic setups. Uh, Sirion had some questions on this. He said, "What should I do based on this magic setup? Based on what you've been doing with the." God Wars fronts, I told him, go buy Corruption Shot, go buy Greater Concentrated Blast. Corruption Blast. Or Corruption yeah. Blast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the thing to note with this is that description of the ability, it in addition to doing more damage, it also, and this is regular and Greater Concentrated Blast, but again, regular Concentrated Blast, you it takes so long to come out, you don't want that third hit. Greater Concentrated Blast, you do get the third hit. Each hit gives the next hit after it 5% additional critical strike chance. So, um, oh, we lost somebody. We lost David. Oh. Okay. Um, there we go. <laughs> okay, so it gives each hit additional 5% critical strike chance, which, it's a channeled ability. It stacks with the channeler's ring. So it effectively gives, this is a little funky because it, it gives a crit strike to the next hit and the ring gives to the current hit. But we can just say each hit of this ability is 9% additional critical strike chance off the previous one which means that on average this thing is like and that's with the channeler's ring right with the channeler's ring the this ability has an average of 18 percent higher critical strike chance than any other ability in your rotation and again those are forced critical hits i think i want to pick up a channeler's ring really expensive once again yeah um 230 mil we're talking about anyways um but channeler's ring plus this you're suddenly your your critical strike chance is like you hit three times, and those three times have eighteen percent higher average critical strike chance than all the other abilities around them. So like running force criticals, and because force criticals, it does t- with an, with this ability about twice the damage it would otherwise deal when things crit. So like half of the ability hits in your rotation are suddenly being able to deal like twenty percent. Like it's I'm jumping, my brain is doing 5 billion things at once. The crit chance on this is significant. It will increase your damage just off of the crit chance alone by almost 10% if you use this every third ability. And you cancel the ability after it. Like, it is... Or you activate the ability immediately after it finishes, I I should say. Like, it... This ability, and the, the, the crit chance stacking with the channeler's ring, and the, like, increased damage and the decreased time, the regular Concentrated Blast is almost not worth using. It is pretty much unquestionably the second worst basic ability in the game on Revolution. It is terrible. Wait, what is it? What is it better than? Uh, Uncancelled Fury. Melee oh, ability oh, Fury oh, for, okay, unupgraded. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Unupgraded gotcha. is worst. <laughs> um, okay. But, yeah. Uh, so... And suddenly this ability is better than everything, potentially including Corruption Blast, which is previously Melee's or Magic's best basic ability. And so those two were kind of vying back and forth. I probably need to do some more math between them. Corruption also can't crit, so you don't want to use it right after this. So you kind of want to put Corruption first and then this second on your bar if you're using Revolution. Um, but it it is just... Actually, the first hit might be able to crit. It might be one of those funky abilities. Brain doesn't do enough magic math. Um, but regardless, like, your contribution is really, really good. It's really, really, really good. Um, and and, and uh, lo and yeah, behold, what this has done, and I'll, and I'll just simplify this, is that if you don't have the money for greater ricochet, which a lot of people don't, we need to be 100% clear on that, that this thing, it, greater yeah. concentrated blast just brings magic up so much. It is almost an equivalent damage boost to Greater Ricochet without needing to re-perk your gear. It is... Greater Concentrated Blast alone, when we came into the Elder God Wars, Magic was doing meta-ish, right? 20-ish percent less damage than the other two styles. Um, with Greater Concentrated Blast, it covered most of that gap just on its own. Like, it is it is a 10 to 20% damage increase to the Magic style just as it stands. Um nuts but so but you know that wasn't enough for magic was it (laughs) 
Then Seven comes Kill. the fractured staff of Armadil from Hard Mode Care Pack that, as we already mentioned, fires off basic attacks, whatever you crit. So we've been talking about that magic crit build. Uh, Channel is Ring, Tsunami, Greater Concentrated Blast. Combine that with the fractured staff of Armadil. And I believe David has found his new friend at the high end PVM spectrum. Yes. Yeah, I mean this. This is a probably was a mistake because um, power creep <laughs> is good for games. No, because power creep is good for games. Um, it's important you have to yeah. have it. This this is like <laughs> I don't know, just a whole new level of power creep. The, the things that yeah. are possible with this are, are kind of nuts. Um, Basically, even even someone who doesn't know that much about PVM but has a lot of money for some reason, like if you're a merker or if you spend a bunch of money and buy yourself some green Santa hats and then sell them and then buy this hat. Um, you think magic, you, you think magic is cool and you get a die. Yeah. Yeah. You can you could very very easily do 500k DPM even with relatively simple rotations very little switching of any kind uh in normal staff of armor spec normal mid-tier dpm damage per minute for the record is about two hundred and fifty thousand. like doing two hundred and fifty thousand as a mid-tier pvmer is pretty darn good like if you are if your gear is 500 mil that's like the type that's the like tier of people we'll say belongs in here Gear is about 500 mil, and you you should expect to do 250,000 damage a minute, give or take 50,000, depending on how good you are with using your ultimates. This thing will, yeah, almost doubles that. Like, overnight, Karapak, Karapak was, we came into the Elder God, we were saying, magic is weak, please send help. And and they gave us Karapak as the first boss, and said, here's help. And we said, oh god, too much, send it was help. Like, it back. The scene it back, of... It back. The- the scene of Endgame where all of the Avengers appear out of the portals is basically what yeah. Jagex did for Magic. It's just, everybody's here now. Uh, so on uh, one hand, you study. have it being a tank class, and then on the other hand, you got it doing this obscene DPM. Right. Yeah, it's the best best for tank, best for burst damage, best for damage over time, and best for AoE. It's like, the, some of the things we're going to be talking about yeah, I don't know. We've 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 mentioned a lot of fractures from. I kind of want to talk about tanking stuff. Yeah, let's uh, move on from that because I feel like we've talked about the mechanics of uh, the yeah. fractured staff of Armadillo, and we are we are we are actually uh, pushing up on on the time limit of this show. Um, I, I did I did anticipate a half hour for each segment, which which we did do for M- Malie and ranged. I will say, Magic has been the one that's carried on a long time. But um, let's just have a quick chat about Crip Bloom then. Unless you have anything yeah. else you'd like to add on the fractured staff, David. Um, I don't. I could do it later. It's, I don't think so right now. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah. Okay. So, Croesus, so, Crip Bloom armor, tier tank, Krosis tier ninety armor. tank armor, tier ninety tank armor. It's it's accessible to the people who want to buy their gear instead of doing raids. Raids has was the only other tier ninety tank armor available in the game. Um, I guess other than uh. Elder Rune, but Elder Rune isn't augmentable, so yeah, it is much less useful. Can't really compare um, that. Crip Bloom, yeah, uh, it's got a passive that uh, several passives. One of them is useful in the situations that I'm going to say include only a couple of raid bosses and AOD, maybe one or two other places where you're doing group hey. PVM in a large group, maybe large group Solak. Um, yeah. And no, other people, I don't think no. So. Yeah, I don't think so either. So, uh, like, you wouldn't want to sacrifice somebody being in power armor for this. Um, the biggest thing here is it has damage reduction on it attached to it. If you're using earth spells, that damage reduction goes up a little bit. Wearing two or three pieces, you get up to, you know, damage reduction specifically against melee and to a less degree against magic. Um, very useful for a lot of bosses. A lot of bosses attack primarily with those two combat styles, um, especially for the base tank role. Um most bosses, in fact, I don't know. There's, there's only mm, one attacks with range. Anyways, well, Yaka, um, Yaka attacks Yaka with Mara. range if you're not MD. Yeah. So, um, but you can just wear tanks. this and go MD, and yeah, you can uh, MD being melee distance. Um, so yeah, um, this 
offers a very large damage reduction, and that stacks with a lot of damage reduction magic already has, including things like we mentioned earlier with Animate Dead, which reduces 75% of hits up to a certain cap. Um, if, but that applies after all other damage reduction has been done. So you add in, um, somebody is using earth spells on the boss, or you are using earth spells on the boss, you get 5% less damage from the spell for most earth spells. Um, you stack that on top of this, you stack that with, uh, perks, you stack that on top of, um, what other damage reduction? Like potentially Emerald spirit Aurora? shield. I mean, Emerald Aurora or, um... Smoke, I think it's smoke, right? It's the earth type ancient yeah. magic. Both of them, both of them do a five percent damage reduction. We're going to assume that there's not going to be somebody using a different one of them. It's just you are using an earth spell, which is five percent. So you stack all these things together, you can reach on magic without using a defensive ability above ninety five percent damage reduction, which is to say and before uh, basic abilities. For it. Yeah, staff of light, staff of light spec. Staff of light spec decreases damage by fifty percent against melee. Costs one hundred percent. Can be used once a minute. Lasts a minute. Can be constantly running, um, and can be used with any weapon equipped if it's in an EOF. Um, so if you stack all these things together, you can you can pass ninety five percent damage reduction on magic without defensives, um, which is ridiculous. Um, once you get hit by damage larger than eight thousand damage in a single hit, you finally pass the animate dead cap. And you you're you cannot reduce damage by that much when you're getting hit by over eight eight thousand damage. Um which is specifically for base tanking a few places and like the Calphite King. <laughs> and kind of nowhere else. Um so like you can do really massive damage reduction on magic with these things without even necessarily using a shield. Um that's, Crip Loom is just like an extension of like, ever, here's some additional... Did we ever figure out what the rationale behind them doing this was? I think they were looking for rewards to give us. Uh, I believe Sponge mentioned it on a couple of streams. Like, he was just looking to design spells, and this spell seemed really cool. That, like, we can reduce damage from stuff. And then he was designing armor, and he's like, okay, well, this Crip Loom seems cool. And, like, at that point, we'd only just rebuffed or re-added the spec to the Fractured Staff of Armadillo, and people were just, like... The design for this armor went in prior to people realizing that it was disgustingly broken. Staff was. And so the armor got released in addition. Um, so magic continues to get buffs. Um, Scriplum is the tank armor. Uh, I think there's some situations where you would still want pieces of the raids armor yeah. to get defensive resets, yeah. but if you're just camping for base tanking or something. Kind, kind of, but the, the of, damage yeah. reduction is so good, you basically don't even need to use defensives anyway. Yeah, and you can still wear two-piece Cripplum and three-piece Octo and just bring, like, a, a pe- you know, again, you don't because you want to be wearing Cinder Banes or other things. Like, most people don't wear more than three-piece tank armor for... yeah anything um you would your rage armor is effectively a switch now to get repeats if you're on magic and have two bill to spare on this crypt um which i think is dropping now because they just changed the drop rates on it but time will tell on that one increase um, slightly we don't know what slightly is of course yeah it's they still did say, the, the helm top and legs are still a ton yeah and i saw a, a note on reddit from AJ mod saying that they will be they're planning to release Elder God Wars drop rates this week, which they're out of the office after this week, so maybe not. I don't know. Um, we will be getting drop rates soon. Now that they seem to, I'm thinking that the patch notes this week were probably the final adjustments for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll get we'll be getting rates pretty soon, so we'll be able to see what that looks like. Regardless, uh, yeah, Cripploom's really good. You can get really high damage reduction on magic with this. Magic is our tank class now. It's great. Um, even just to use like um, other armors, other just tank armor, like or armor, whatever it is, to just learn content because you just don't need to worry about taking damage uh, unless you're being hit by very large numbers. So, um, yeah, Bloom is busted damage reduction allows you to do some pretty silly things, but just not take damage for them. All you can right, ignore a lot of boss mechanics, whatever it is. So um, that's cool. Before we move on to the to the Zuck rewards, I'll also just say this year we had a patch note where a bunch of the spells were buffed uh, to tier 99 damage, so they would scale. Previously, they stopped scaling around the 80 range, and these are, of course, the Aurora spells that I mentioned, uh, the Blitz and the Barrage ones. Uh, Blitz uh, scaled 92, and the Barrage is now scaled nine, to 99, of course, and the reason that's important is we now have a tier 95 staff. 
So, yeah. All right, Magma Tempest. Our yeah. our discussion on that episode, rumors of its death, greatly exaggerated after it was nerfed. It's still dead, Jim. You serious? Uh, Very clear. It it was incredibly good. Now it is useful. Yeah, I mean, I think it's better than useful. Um, it's like, at least at worst, it's like a top three magic basic. It was, it was pretty good. It's and free, also, I think so. yeah, and and plus when you fire it manually, it like lets you do, there's a couple things. Every time you fire it manually, it automatically comes with an auto with it. Oh, I didn't realize coded, it threw an auto in there. Yeah, yeah, so it's coded the same way as defensive, so it's a lossless auto. And okay. it's very nice because you can drop Magma Tempest the tick before a boss spawns. And so you're just like, you know, already getting some damage in. Uh, so that's free. That's yeah. kind of kind of nice too. Okay. Um, and it's like it's very good at at Zuck, obviously, just because big AOE yeah. is nice. So yeah, it's still it's amazing for AOE. Manual version of it will get you a little more out of the AOE because you can plant it between things rather than on a target. So you can hit more things. You can kind of design it with that way. Um, the manual version of it is also kind of... I mean, I didn't realize it threw uh, an auto. So the auto is a big deal because that free yeah. auto is an extra like 50% ability damage per take. Yep. So um, that probably does buff it up to top three um, yeah. when you fire it manually. When you're firing it on a revolution, um, specific, and it also can activate poison eight times. So um, without poison, without... You fired manually. This is an entirely average basic. It does almost the same damage as your five second ability. It's not astounding. Yeah. Other than applying it in an AoE. With the auto attack and on a poisonable target, this probably bumps up to yeah, being top one or two even. How much would you um, pay I for it? One point five, With that's what it is. The auto? I personally wouldn't pay more than a few hundred mil for this because I don't magic like mad. Um also because, again, like I say, it's useful for Slayer. I don't want to spend bills on things I use for Slayer All right. normally. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely get almost everything else before this unless you are basically camping hard mode Zuck and that's like all you do, then, then prioritize this for sure. All right. So it's not it's not a must-have, but it's definitely something that, that you guys both agree is in the useful camp then now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Useful, just not, no longer best. It was what, two weeks as the best ability <laughs> in the game history? Like, by a long shot, yeah. Yeah, by a lot. Like it, it was pretty common. It was like, it was rivaling, especially with with a full magic setup of top tier gear. It was like, it was probably knocking Greater Ricochet in its heyday out the water. All right. Yeah. Crazy. Well, let's, yeah. anything else on that or should we move on to the cape? Because, you know, that's the one that everybody uh, wrote about when we uh, started with Zuck. Let's talk Ape. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Omnipower. 60% adrenaline hits four times. Um, fractured Staff of Armadillo Synergies. It was broken on the first week. Uh, it's been fixed. It still Literally. is useful. Um, <laughs> you guys enjoy the it? First week uh, it was doing, the first week it was doing 180% intended damage, which is our, it was doing well over 1,000% ability damage. It's just like, here's a free 20 cape. Slap them. That was a low roll. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they fixed that like four days later. We're gonna move on. Um, yes, it's really nice. It's a good. It gives magic big burst damage on a hefty cooldown. Thirty second cooldown gives magic this big burst damage, um, and an adrenaline jump, which, as you've mentioned with tsunami, magic could use adrenaline dumps. Um, and the the G chain synergy is magnificent. Uh, greater chain. Behold. Right. Right. So yeah. uh Greater Chain it allows you to do this on a whole group which like let's be clear that Greater Chain has always been able to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and just people didn't have a need to greater ch- to like up omnipower or giant damage on multiple targets. Because you could just fix G Chain before and do similar things. But like not similar, but like a lot of damage. Not this much damage, but a lot of damage. Um what do I put with this? Uh, just a good adrenaline dump. Uh, lovely for magic. It hits four times, which is four chances to activate poison, which is kind of a drop in the bucket in terms of its damage output, which is fine. Um, but it's also each of those 
uh, four hits can crit, so it works very nicely with the fractured staff. Yeah, and with the whole greater chain thing, it can hit multiple targets if you use it after greater yes. chain. If I remember that synergy. If you greater chain chroming, you can use this ability and do six hundred percent ability damage onto seven different targets. Um, if you math that out, that is forty two hundred percent ability damage, which uh, means that you can do over two hundred thousand ability damage with a single ability. If you have targets that can take that much damage, <laughs> uh, which yeah. is lovely and fun, and, that's and just requires you to have nice... the chroming park and a whole setup, right? And it's like, what? But... What the heck is going on here? Hard hard mode Zuck waves are uh, are a joy yeah. with uh, G chain chroming plus on the tower. And this is why Greater Chain is still four hundred mil. Yeah, it spent uh, eleven months or ten months being. 115, 130k, or 130 mil, and it is now three to four times that because, you know. People want magic. People realize that one, magic is good, and two, um, this ability is. Like, again, I think it's a little overhyped because it's not. Most bosses are still single target and do not have uh, adds, additional damage dealers that have tons of hit points. But, like, for specifically the Zook front and. Trying to think of what other like. Well, so we've got have. Solak, Solak arms and legs. Solak arms and legs. Yes, great. True, and true, uh, uh, Virago on Scopulus weak or Scopulus yep. phase yep. on hard mode. Yep. True. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and those you don't necessarily need Karoming for. You don't need it at all. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. Need, the only place you need a Karoming switch is. Zuck. Yeah, and and like maybe there's 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 I mean you may as well bring it for AOD if you're like doing high end AOD. That's true. You can, kill, you can hit all Minions. four of the majors plus yep. plus uh, AOD. Yep. All right. Um, and yeah, this has led us into a position I think where you look at everything we have with magic, and for the top end of the PVM spectrum, and I'm and I might be in effect reading too much into our final conclusion here. But it feels like magic is once again at the top. Yeah, yeah no question. Okay. It's the, so I would say it's the best for tank, burst damage, and um, sustained damage. So I, I just put this in here, some world firsts. Uh, the combination of these allowed Virago to be soloed on all these, uh, yeah. uh, including Vitalis and Green Bomb. Uh, Telos, uh, our friend Goat, did a complete tendril skip, uh, which may sound like weird jargon, but basically Tendril is the first mechanic of phase one. And then if you skip it on phase one, it's the first mechanic of phase two. And okay. the magic upgrades allow for such an enormous amount of damage output that you could skip mechan- So the first two phases of Telos have zero mechanics if you're doing an ideal magic rotation. Um, at Solak, you can do the realm skip. So 300k damage in like... I don't know, maybe 20 seconds ish 20 to 25 yeah. seconds you can do that solo um and then almost every single world record has been done so for example someone did uh the challenge mode hellware fight in under 12 seconds so that's 300k damage in less than 12 seconds um so you could you could easily in ideal conditions, right? So when you're not very lucky, with, this is like very high rolls on on very much yeah. luck dependent things. Yeah. yeah. So very very high rolly, but also not dealing with mechanics. You could hit one mil damage per minute in an FSOA spec, but the bare minimum high highs um, low lows. Yeah, the bare minimum is about 500k DPM um, with magic with a now, so. with a good setup and fully knowledge for rotation and gear. Without yeah. the fractured staff, magic would probably be similar on similar par to melee. Potentially, range range might still be king, but it's going to be close. With yeah, fractured staff, th- just sets it so far off the rails; it's not even funny. Yeah, I think I think magic and ranged are very cl- very close to equivalent, and range is h- high really because of dynamic adrenaline. Um, yeah, so there, it's it's close. But I think magic is slightly better than, than yeah. range even without it. Yeah. And I think um, people aren't using range optimally. I think even optimal use range, you'd be closing the gap a little bit. But optimal use range, like, I think a lot of people just aren't using the, uh, the arrows the way they should be. All right. Uh, and it's worth noting uh, a lot of things got really expensive due to this. So, <laughs> you know, most magic gear has tripled or quadrupled in price. Uh, 
Um, and then water runes got really expensive. Um, because eleven years you later, don't insight fear. So if you want, you can make like thirty-five mil an hour doing water runes or something like that. It's pretty pretty funny. That's quite uh, the geyser. That's quite the geyser. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, and uh, the last thing we didn't talk about is spells. So the like meta is insight fear, and then you switch to blood barrage during your FSOA spec because if you don't, then rune costs can get up to fifteen or more mil per hour. Um, and the other thing about that is that blood barrage healing basically means magic, even in even at high level PVM situations like AOD, magic basically means zero food usage because you're doing you're firing so many blood barrage autos that yeah. the healing from all of those blood barrage autos is more damage than even something like AOD is capable of doing. So it, it also is functionally a zero it basically makes it so you're using zero food anywhere because you're just doing more damage than bosses. You're healing more damage from blood spells than bosses are capable of dealing to you. Okay. So before we wrap up and, you know, say where things were and where things wound up, um, I'm just, I just got a bit of a miscellaneous grab bag here. Um, yeah, these are important. Elder God War scriptures. When? These are, I think they did a great job designing these. The big book is great for your skillers and uh, whatchamacallit, and clue scroll gatherers. And there's these other three. Um, Wonderful the, the, and Jess. Yeah, let me, let me just say the way I see it, then you guys can tell me if I'm wrong on this. When, high end, where AoE is needed, um, full, situationally best in slot, single target. Jazz, best budget option, but recently... For high-end damage dealers, they can now take better advantage of it, especially this week. Now that the calculations are done, after things like the uh, damage modifiers from vulnerability and the like have been taken into account. Yeah. Um, does that sounds yeah, so, about right? Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the biggest points here, the one book, anywhere you're going to hit multiple targets or your target isn't moving, the one book is... is probably your best option full book is the on a single target it's the highest potential damage well it's the highest like math damage of them because it's just you know your abilities will their base value hit will be just 20 percent higher when it activates um and it activates more it's active more of the time than the jazz book the jazz book is better for because it calculates at the end of everything and it includes bleed so the full book activates like a damage boosting ultimate where it doesn't boost the damage of bleed abilities and it doesn't boost um, some other like odds and ends like like poison damage. Um, the Jazz book will increase your poison damage. Every every hit of damage that you do onto your target from any source whatsoever will activate with the Jazz book. Um, which effectively means like melee abilities where you're applying 5 billion dam- bleeds to something uh, that wouldn't be picked up by the other book. Um, or um, poison damage, those kind of things. You're running a very heavy poison ability, you're running a blood reefer, those kind of things. Um, the Jazz book will be better for those situations because even though it is, like, in a theory, 30 or 50% less damage than the full book, in actuality, is because it's active on much more things, uh, it can do more damage. Yeah. Uh, even, even including Grimoire, uh, Jazz is best in slot for ranged at places where poison works. Yeah. Even right. including Grimoire, I had not done that math. That I believe you. Yeah, but, yeah, hundred percent. That's quite um, the statement. Obviously, Grimoire for obviously Grimoire for magic, but but for range specifically, because Greco gives you opportunity for so much poison, um, it's the best in slot ability where you can poison stuff. In your Interesting. Range. Or, I wonder how that works well, with the Death Bore Arrow crit calculations, but that is probably math. For yeah, I don't, I don't know. This is just like. Kind of current, current use, of soul. yeah, yeah, current use. Yeah. I absolutely agree. I I can totally believe that. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like then we got a three actual usable books that are usable in many different situations that you could, yeah. in effect, use any one of them and still be successful. But if you wanted yeah. to, you can pick and choose based on your application. And the Jazz book is cheap. Um, there's almost, for budget PVMers, there's almost not a single better upgrade that you could buy in the whole game for than the Jazz book, given the yeah. price. It's so cheap. cheap, and you're just like, 
flapping on <laughs> even if you're not really taking advantage of it you're still just like getting a ton of free damage yeah. for like 17 mil it's probably similar damage to cinder Bains in a lot of for a lot of people who are using them and you know yeah. a fifth of cost so yeah that's great um all right just want to run down the list cease yeah. uh cease you guys like cease anywhere i have it on my bar an ability uh, that just uh, makes you stop i use it in a rack sword <laughs> It's not useful, really, if you're not using Revolution. <laughs> so, yeah. um, as a person who revos basics a lot of places, um, Cease is lovely for Virago Reflex, for Arax or Reflex, for um, occasional other places. Um, it's a nice thing to have, but it's not really a buff in any way. It's no, it's just more it, it can be good. It's pretty, it's pretty useful at Telos if you're... Um, if you, like... So on phase four Telos, it's very important to phase at a certain time so that you have three auto attacks going mm. into a font. Um, so if you're about to phase Telos, you could use Cease to prevent yourself from doing that. So then he'll do another auto so that you get your special at the right time. I mean, that's kind of weirdly neat. Sure. It is, I mean, it yeah. is kind of nice for that. I, it can, in some situations, in some bosses, allow you to drop target so that you can eat without losing adrenaline or like there I mean there's some like funky back end stuff you can do with Cease but yeah. meta wise not incredibly impactful it's a nice quality of life now uh, what about the gloves of passage balance change hey they made them useful <laughs> they went from being 500k or whatever they were to being more than that somewhat yay somewhat uh, somewhat so these are the like they tried to make them, and I think they succeeded in making very similar in line with. Um, I think they're less impactful, but they are in line with, uh, in terms of use, with the nightmare gauntlets and Carapax wrist wraps. Okay. Um, yeah. These are the like on a non poisonable target with melee, where you don't want to be using Goliath gloves because reasons. Um, like for maybe Slayer on some poison immune targets, these are potentially best in slot. Twenty percent increased yeah. damage from bleeds for ten seconds in one case. Yeah, after using havoc or smash. Which, like, if you're on revolution, you're not necessarily timing your bleeds for that. But like, you could just set up a bar to have bleeds after having. I mean, yeah, they're they're good. They're it's, they're better damage than. It's good with easy K. It's good with easy K. They're like I would use. I personally will will use these everywhere that isn't poisonable when I'm using me- melee. Like, I just don't think there's a better glove option. Like, if you really want the... Um, like, the, I'm going to be honest. The bleed from Trim Masterwork actually kind of annoys me. <laughs> like, I don't, like, use it places where I'm getting smacked like that. Um, where it's going to save my life. It just kind of is annoying to have it always on. So, um, I will use these over Trim Masterwork gloves most places. Um, I think they're better damage output. That would make yeah. sense. That would make sense. All right. Uh, cleave and sweep changes update. Uh, that was update episode eight hundred fifty seven yep. for the dragon halberd special. Uh, we talked about that a bit earlier. They basically Much took the two off cooldown, and this makes the dragon halberd uh, special a good thing to put in essence of finality. Yep. For reasons that were never clear to anybody, activating the dragon halberd special put cleave on cooldown, and cleave did the same thing for the dragon halberd, um, which. The Dragon Halberd does 230% ability damage, which is, like we said, um, a Dragon Claw will do 20% more damage than that uh, to a single target uh, as a special attack, talking about EOFs. But it's, but, it's more Adren, though. Yes, this is 30% Adren instead of... Oh, Dragon Claws are 50, isn't it? Yeah, so th- this is the best um, of the Dragon weapons for, for me. Yeah. Um, in addition, this also does AoE, so it will cleave, if you're wielding a two-square melee range weapon, it will cleave everything in a two-square range in front of you, the same range as Sweep has, or the same range as Cleave has, um, for, and it'll hit twice for the 230 damage, which means it can activate poison twice on all of those targets. Um, it's very good, yeah. it's very good special. Um, people will eventually just have them in EOFs. Yeah, they'll, instead they'll of pick up on it eventually so after they listen to this episode. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, just, then just a couple other little things. Grasping Rune Pouch from Croesus. I think that's just the quality of life. Quality Very of life. little yeah. to pick up. Uh, Pernix Quiver. So, save, you, save, you save some soul runes. It's, it's yep. not nothing. It's good. Like, it's a good little money save. Um, 
And having a bit of rune pouches that can hold four runes is really nice. It saves an inventory slot. Which, put a switch in there, put a fish in there, whatever, you, whatever <laughs> your choice. Um, Pernix Pernix quiver? quiver. Yeah. Um, Once similar again. for range. I think this is a little more Im- impactful, personally. Given that, uh, given my opinion on the arrows being a little slept on. Are you going to buy um, one? I have two. Oh, okay. So yes, I bought one for my alt. Um, there's a couple of things with the quiver. Um, the quiver, obviously, it's really nice to switch back and forth between arrows and bolts. If you, it saves you an inventory slot on having an extra ammo switch. If you want two of the same type, even two bolts, two arrows. Um, and the interesting thing about it is that undyed quiver and without a quiver and as well as any of the Tyranno and quivers any ammo you have stored in them costs against your death cost and the quiver is like 1 GP I think to save um, if you have a dyed Parnix quiver all of your ammo reclaim cost from within that quiver is free it is 1 GP to reclaim huh. all of your ammo and the quiver huh. <laughs> uh, found that out today so huh. that's cool is that um, supposed to be so- that way? I don't know, but there's so many things that are interesting with the death system that we've already discussed recently that oh, I don't know. the died thing the died thing for whatever reason no longer accounts for the ammo held within it. Okay. Um the undyed one without any ammo in it does have a one GP reclaim cost. But it also has a cost added to it according to given this is like thirty K, like if you had a full quiver of like a Raxite arrows or even like expensive bolts, if you had a thousand, couple thousand hydro or criminal bolts in there, the reclaim cost on it is like 50k i think that's not much it's it's pretty cheap so yeah. it saves you like 50k when you die which brings us back to the thing i was mentioning above with the soccer's ring where like range deaths aren't expensive if you're not using elite serenic and you're not using crossbows <laughs> interestingly um so all right save you a little bit of money and fine I uh, I believe I, I think you put this in here tanis didn't you accessibility roundup or are we talking about this from a different angle here um, yeah, I had put that in there, um, and I think just the main points I, I want to address yeah, um, please. With, with, the, <laughs> with what's left of the show is um, progress, progress, progress. Um, where we started with Elder God Wars um, was a little rough, um, and it kind of showed some of the limitations of what it, they can do to make Greenscape combat accessible in the first place right um because it's Carapac definitely was, not not your experience that we had at syria well right but like if if you think about it care pack was a very kind of traditional runescape yeah. in the vein type of boss mm-hmm. um and it was very inaccessible um for <laughs> any of the many of those reasons um but it started you know it started to get um i, I want to say better um but it it actually the next couple of releases <laughs> didn't really get better um they had their own they had their own issues um we had major contrast issues with the art yeah. uh, glacier and then um we had major um colorblind issues with um Krosis. but i say progress because jagex was listening and they made some huge improvements by adding um voice lines to the arch uh mm-hmm. glacier and then you know they've tried to address the color blindness um issue with Croesus. So i don't think we're there yet but this is all like As really said, baby steps good yeah i mean it's it's yeah. really good and i'm really happy to see how it went and then you know we kind of finish it off with um with the uh what's his name you know the big, the big boy zuck mm-hmm. um and they really benefited by being able to have it where it was and uh, the color scheme that they had because it did make it a lot um easier to see yeah and that was and, surprising because uh, on on launch week what what yeah. wave was it that you got to again <laughs> with that didn't you beat it on release week you got I, to never, I never that. beat i never beat the boss it was the um wave okay. that had the was it three chads? Oh, oh, it's the, it was three chads. That's the second to last wave, so it's pretty I mean, yeah, it's great. And then all you would have had after that was Hurricane, which if you did Hurricane for the kiln, that would have been no problem. Oh yeah, yeah, I used to do that. 
And yeah. this Hurricane only shows up in two locations instead of four, so if you're using your screen magnifier, it's actually probably easier than the one in the kiln for you. Yeah, that yeah, well definitely I'd only have to um yeah, keep track of two. I think you can yeah. get it done. I might have to go back and, and just uh give it a shot, but um overall, you know, I just think that they're being responsive and that's all I could ever ask. Um mm-hmm. there are going to be limitations with with RuneScape combat and, and accessibility, just with the nature of the game and, and how it works. But um you know, little additions like what they did with the with the Arch Claker took it from one of the most inaccessible bosses and probably made it the most accessible boss in the game. Yep. Mm. Um and that was just it, you know, I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed seeing them do that um this year. Twenty straight minutes of voice lines played back to back to back that they recorded and put into the game for it. Just for the Is that really how long it is? I saw somebody posted it in uh, one of the Discord shows. Oh, it's, wow. it's over okay. 20 minutes long. It's about, I think, like 8 to 9 minutes of Ariane and almost 12 minutes of uh, As an Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because he speaks a little slower. But it's yeah. it's a lot of similar voice lines. But yeah, for every mechanic, they have multiple voice lines they can do. Anytime the boss hits you for large amount, anytime you hit the boss for large amounts, they've got multiple voice lines. So That's perfect. They did a great with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's just unpack the winners of 2021 then. And what I'm, we're going to do the mid tier section, the high end section, and I'm going to ask the each of you, Thaxi and David, um, where did we start in 2021 and where did we end? So let's do the mid tier. Let's start with, um, let's start with you, David. Where did mid tier PVM start with? Uh, ranged, um, because back criminal bolts are real good. Ruby bolts hit hard. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. You agree with that, Taxi? I do. I think melee was doing very well too. Like p- for people that truly enjoy melee and and had trained a lot of melee, like had got to mid tier, have five hundred mil worth of gear in melee. Um, I think melee was up there, but it's just challenging to melee a lot of PVM. So, um, in terms of like learning new bosses and and getting into PVM, I think range, as, like David's saying, Magic was struggling a little bit. All right, at all tiers. And now focusing on the end of the year, 2021 mid-range PVM, who wins? So I I kind of forgot about tier 88 um, <laughs> weapons when I said ranged. So if you're assuming size mix, then I, I felt like that was outside of mid-range price-wise since they're like a, a bill almost getting close yeah. to there. Um, but factoring in tier 88, I would say magic, the, the argument I had for range was just that it's still, in my opinion, the easiest style to get competent at to where you're like doing a reasonable percentage of the maximal output. Whereas I think even with mid tier stuff, magic is still trickier to use. It's very clunky on revolution to use magic. And ranged, honestly, is especially now that like they're even removing stuff like the auto you would get with tendril. Like ranged, ranged is very, very easy to use with revolution. Um, and so I think that yeah. there's a there's an argument for range still because ascensions are kind of expensive and take up the bulk of the like 500 mil budget we're giving it. But a, yeah. but I don't know well, if, if you. Yeah, I think I think you can you could buy a Noxbow. Like I think mid tier range right now might not even include Ascension. I think it might include a Noxbow or even uh, a Destination. Sure. And um, and yeah, I think it, because the arrows I think are pretty good, and you can absolutely bring splintering arrows. And unlo- like it's two week, two to three weeks, right, to unlock things uh, from. If you already have like if you're not getting the wave bonuses, it's a couple of weeks to unlock things from from Shattered Worlds. Um, and so I think I think range. That's kind of where we're at right now. Is ruby bolts are still pretty good, and you can use. Um, you know, you've got options for that. Um, even like the thing that magic has going for it right now, as like the, the comparison is that, uh, be like greater concentrated blast is so incredibly powerful if you're not switching. Like range, I absolutely agree. Like you can mimic on range everything that the high tier people are doing with relatively few differences, right? You can like 
with the exception of like some very expensive essence of finality additions, you can do pretty much the same rotations and setup. Um, you have to be a little careful with revolution on range because snipe does need to be canceled. Otherwise, you do waste a lot of it. Like, snipe is a kind of a questionable ranged ability. Um, yeah, you could you could also just not use snipe, and that, that's <sighs> okay. you got you get on a revolution bar. You you run the risk without snipe of of hitting the end of your bar a lot faster. You need to have a wider I guess a wider revolution fair. window. Um, so snipe is the question, there. but in terms of like other than a snipe and just which for anybody who's curious what I'm talking about. Snipe is takes 1.8 seconds to fire. If you just use, if you queue an ability while snipe is going, you cancel it after 2.4 seconds exactly. Actually, I think it takes 2.4 to fire. Um, you otherwise you you lose a tick. It's just because it's a channeled ability, you lose a tick afterwards. Um, and if you want to like, that's a ton of damage loss every 10 seconds. Um, range right now still has the criminal bolts, and so either the criminal bolts or if you have the arrows. Um, that's what I'm going to say is mid-tier for range. Still doing great. Um, Greater Concentrated Blast is so ridiculously broken overpowered that I would even be willing to say that for like mid-tier PVM, if you've got anything above tier 80, I would say you, you're probably putting out similar damage to a lot of uh, range people using like tier, tier 90. So what's it going to be, major ranged? I think you could use either and be fine. Honestly, like that's yeah. what I would end up with. Um, I think Mage was the winner of the year in terms of Mage mid-tier Obviously. players gained more from Mage because Greater Concentrated Blast is disgusting. Yeah. So basically um, what chin, you're saying is that... Chins are still really good. If you like elite dungeons, Chins are, are still great. So we started yeah. where mid-tier 2021 ranged was the be-all and end-all. But yeah. at the end of 2021, it could be either. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah, it's... It's yeah. it's probably it's probably magic. Honestly. If if you have the ports weapons for sure. If you um, yeah, if you, you have two radiate ports weapons and yeah. you have greater concentrated blast, it's the winner. Um, yeah. It is the best for five hundred mil. Yeah. All right, high end. What, what was uh, our yeah. friend at the high end? Yeah, I mean, range by far the best. Nothing else was close, and now magic by far the best. Oh. Gricko was busted. Gricko was nerfed. Magic care pack now exists. Uh, even without the fractured staff of Armadillo, it would be pretty close. Um, I mean, again, we've we've spent a lot of time talking about this. I should note the fractured staff of Armadillo cannot use greater concentrated blast. <laughs> you kind of have to like have a switch there yeah. to use both of these things. So like both of these are huge power creep. They do not overlap, and that's good. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, and like you can't even. Because the Fractured Staff Armadillo fires a main hand auto attack, you can't even put it in a Essence of Finality and use it with a Wand and Orb to use Greater Ricochet uh, to use Greater Country to Blast because um, like your, only fire, your autos do significantly less damage when fired from a Wand instead of a Staff. Yeah. Um, and still cost the same amount of runes, which is wild. Um, so there is a trade-off there. Like you, They don't overlap perfectly. You have to do a lot of playing around, but if you have, if you're feeling sweaty, magic, and it's not close, is the best combat star right now. Yeah. Um, range people are still, I think, still figuring it out. All right. I mean, I think range is still really good. Um, if, if so, we haven't, really, we haven't really talked about the in between. Like, if if you can yeah. afford, if you have five bill but not twelve, then <laughs> range is still. If you, incredible. I mean, I think there are a lot of players. Still better. Like yeah. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Think, I'm, I'm like I that think a, a lot, lot of, of a lot of times. I think a lot of players have gotten like one third age die, but are nowhere close to like fifteen. Okay, let me let so. me just rephrase this then. What would what are you guys using going into 2022 primarily? I like range. I will always be using range. David, um, if I wanted to do maximum damage, I would be on magic. Yeah, I mean. At a certain right now, I I just PVM on my Iron Man. I don't have magic here, but at a, at, at, as soon as I do, I'll I'll switch to magic. Okay. Sure. Um, and then on my main, when I PVM on my main, I use mage. That's like once a month or less. All right. And I am and I am on ranged uh, right now, but I am I am nowhere near that five bill high end. So I think we can. You have five bill worth of range gear, Shane. I do. You bought you bought Greater Ricochet not too long ago. Yeah, that's but that's included not five bill. And that's 
close to 1.5, you're like, next thing we know, you'll be buying a, a Saren Godbow, and just yeah, between right. those two things, you're yeah, and right. your and your crossbows, and you'll be there. That's it. That's like you're well, you're you're, you're already at five. you're already at like two and a half though, so you're already oh halfway my, there. Oh my god, have, have I spent that much? Serenic? Do you have Elite Serenic Shane? No. I'm no, using but, I'm using tier eighty two power. But he's got an EOF. You, you have like an EOF ascensions in Greco, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's basically two and a half bill. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Tanis, do you have anything else? Uh, no, no. I, I'll I think... be over here and punching things in the face with my melee. Hell yeah, dude! Uh, hey, what, one day, one day along. it could be good. We just we just need to get you. Like a little thing that gives you adrenaline every time you bleed, and you'll be you'll be partying. That's it. We're one upgrade away from like what is it? I think it's meteor strike that gives the adrenaline buff for melee. Like if they could yeah. do for if they could give you something that does what incite fear does for tsunami, and just give that same thing to melee. Melee's gold, dude. Melee is off to the races. <laughs> Alrighty, well, thanks so much, everybody, for uh, being here. This was uh, this was quite the episode, and here here uh, uh, us we were discussing initially. Oh, should we put this in as an addendum to an episode? We can get it done in forty five minutes, right? No, we didn't. Yeah, you you messaged me like, oh, could we talk about PVM meta changes in like a segment? I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I think we could. I think we could. But I think it would. There's also enough to fill. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Um, just uh, in the interest of time's sake, we do we do have uh, two picks of the week. I'll just mention them quickly before we go. Uh, as this episode is releasing Christmas Eve, I have a very traditional Christmas video uh, put together um, by the St. Paul's Church of Auckland, New Zealand, that mm-hmm. tells the very traditional Christmas story. So give that a watch. And uh, very quickly, David, what's your pick of the week? The Princess Switch? The Princess Switch 3. Uh, this is the the third the third film in the epic of our times. Um, I think I think we I think most people would describe it as analogous to Lord of the Rings. Um, sure, in, in sure. Being a genre definer. Oh my uh, but God. it's v- Vanessa Hudgens' third movie in which she plays both of the main characters of the movie. Um, where you know you've got your classic princess mm. and. Uh, you know, modern parrot commoner, trap. Yeah, commoner switch roles and see if people notice and uh, live each other's lives. And, and yeah, it's great. Um, if you like movies that are designed to make you cringe constantly, <laughs> then you'll love this. Uh, also, uh, or if you have young daughters at home, let's be honest here. Okay, what yeah, you see this or, you know, problem, you, be be responsible. <laughs> but if you wanted to make like a drinking game out of this, uh, there's a oh, lot Tannis of ways could, to do that. Tannis too. could show this at home. Oh, oh, like I said, I can't wait to see the social commentary. Yeah, it's it's <sighs> great. Um, and, you You're know, poor. Is great. <laughs> this is what it's like to be elite. Yeah, if, if you <laughs> if you love movies that are bad from the opening credits to the ending credits, you're gonna love this one. All right, I'm sure there's somebody out there that loves this movie that is just very sad right now, David. <laughs> but, but like, it's endearing, you know. Like all these Christmas oh sure, oh are sure, because of their just disastrousness all right well, designed well, for an adult audience Indeed. well thank you both of you for being here and indulging us for two and a half hours oh, on pvm you. um tanis and i did our best to guide this going forward but if you have any questions of course join the discord or rspmb.com slash discord both these two are in there and we'll happily answer any pvm questions you yep. guys have and with that being said have a merry christmas everyone tanis and i will be back next week for the clip show it's gonna be a fun one See you then, everyone. Take care. See you. Ciao.